All right, how to match Sinji? It's time to keep on going. Uh, I realize that I probably don't need to be going around all that much. Otherwise, I might accidentally activate story progress that I don't want to activate. That said, I think this Ruined Forge intake... Ruined Forge Lava intake is actually a pretty good dungeon. Be able to get the Anvil Hammer here, which I might like. Maybe? Let me just see. Ruined Forge Lava intake. What's the boss here? Boss here is... Oh, there is no boss. Well, that's funky. And the greater potent... Oh! Hefty Volcano Pot. That's okay. Living Magma. Weak to... God knows what. Raw Untamed Power of Fire itself. And then the Golem Smith is... Weak to... Presumably Strike. Said, I think... Be nice to try to go through this dungeon now. The anvil hammer would let me deal fire. Uh, no, no, actually, never mind. I'm backing out. Well, it. Pff, guess who needs to go back out and up? Me. Okay. So, Redmane Free and Horn Scent are still over there. So, one Mickle is cross marks that way. Hmm. Castle Ensis is right here. There's a boss, Ravana, who would need to be... I think I'll just work my way down by Church of Consolation. Let's see where that might take me. That should be fine. There... Ooh, you can see how long it takes this place to load in. Now, DLC performance is noticeably a bit worse. I think... Let's buff up before all this. We can put our seal back on here. Okay. Let's golden vow this up. Put on some black points protection. So that curse blade is going to probably rip me a new one otherwise. Hello there. Hi. I oh, okay. Thanks. And one, two. Ooh. Ah. Uh. Oh. Oh, you can block like that. That was funky. Okay. Luckily, that... Putting up the bus before that started was... Very much a good idea. A little bit overkill, but... Better safe than sorry. Okay. Work our way down here. Don't see anything popping up at the moment. But... I can afford to use flask healing, given that enemies will recharge those. And of course, I can also afford to buff pretty leniently, given that I also get blue flask back too. Hmm. Trying to think, not resin. Then, uh, got these undead. Well, they die easily. Said, hammer would be good against them too. But I've only got so much carry capacity. It would be really great to be able to carry oh, more weapons at once. I could switch between them more easily, but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. That group of undead would have given me a flashback if I hadn't. That's nothing. Mm hmm. I'd actually use one beforehand. Oh well. So all these spectral gravestones. Mm -hmm. Is this anything? I heard something. That's okay. Just two chunks of meat. Okay. Huh. Let's continue along our merry way. What else might be around here? Some of these skulls should have broken runes in them, presumably, I would think. Hmm. How do I... Huh. 
thought there'd be a few more items here, but this is... Okay, just a player phantom, presumably? Maybe... So that's Jagged Peak over there. Where there are dragons, so I can't go there quite yet. Hmm. Actually, I'm not sure. Not sure how I'll get there and when. Presumably there's going to be a drop down eventually somewhere, but... What is this and that? Hmm. Just need to make sure I don't get anywhere near Shadow Keep. Is this a Mikola's Cross? Looks a bit like it. Oh well. Or nothing? Okay. Hmm. Yeah, that does not actually seem to be much of anything at all. Oh, come on. And you... Ah, okay, so that's an okay way to get more foul feet. Okay, so I feel like farming more while I'm in here. Instead of going back to... Radon's area. That, yep, that broken rune is... Slightly better tiny rune. Lots of things along this path. Splash shards, okay. And, oh, okay, there we have some Mesmer soldiers. So what else is in here? Hmm. Trying rather hard. Red flesh mushroom. And... Uh, how do I want to do this? Got another Mesmer soldier, but you're still asleep. Okay. Let's charge this up. And... That actually did not kill in one hit. It's a bit of a surprise to me. But given that we were going to be fighting some soldiers down here, presumably, I think I'll keep the Stitcher on. What down there? I'm wondering how I might be able to get there eventually. I presume I'll be able to at some point, even if not right now. Okay. Come on. Again, not that I really needed the beast bones, but hello. Go ahead, poke the funny dog. And stab. Stab again. Okay. That. Okay. So, that deals more damage than a fully charged heavy. I expected as much, but. <sighs> Wanted to see if I could do something other than relying on Ashes of War, but. I guess it makes sense, because one costs FP, even if the other does take a bit longer. Gotta encourage you to make use of your resources. Okay. So what all and where? I guess that the Church of Consolation is just the church itself and nothing else? Maybe. I... Hmm. Getting down there is going to be painful. Yeah, if only they gave us a glider. That would make things much easier. Hmm. So we can keep walking on as a way to see who is where, but a couple of pokes will do the job too. They're easily staggered enough that I don't exactly have to worry about them getting up. Hmm. Come on. Come on. What is that down there? This is okay, another do gem. Wondering what I'll use those for eventually. Hmm. Any of these going to be ways down, or... It does not exactly look like it. Huh. Maybe if I go a bit more into raw? What is this? Something with... Maybe... Some kind of ancient dragon smithing stone or something? Because those are actually rather common here. Hmm. I... There are a bunch of these guys. It would not hurt me to buff. Okay. Thank you. Let's just take them out. Thanks. Simple enough. Blue Lords is decent. What would be rather nice. Oh, Blessing of America and that. 
Special Physic, blessed by Merica, Queen of the Urgery, can permanently restore his HP, heals all elements. Merica once created several of these physics from Hasmer Sink, but never again. Hmm. That's sad. That it's basically one of those blessings from Blessing Potions from Dark Souls. Oh? Was it the waterfall that made that lag? I know that behind one waterfall in the DLC there is some secret. But I guess it's not here. So always futility. That turn back. Always dead end. Well, alright. I okay, and this flaming dog somehow is not negatively affected by the water. Alright. Let's put buffs back on. And take this camp out. Thank you, thank you. Where are you then? Alright, and one, two, ah. That did hit, and I think Stitcher is actually more than a little better at taking those guys out. Because of the... Let's drink that. Anybody else in here? Let's see, I would expect maybe... Okay, and Black Pyrefly. I thought for a second that might be the Smoldering Butterfly, but no, it was. Slightly better version. Hmm. No jumping ahead. Thank you, I couldn't tell. Okay, you know what? It's always a good opportunity to farm a few more. Falfi. Question is where I'll get the fireflies. Oh, well. Someone got alerted. I feel like they drop more. It's a higher number of flight pinions than I think I normally get. Oh, giant dragon corpse. Fun. Okay, let's try that again. Do another sneak job. Okay. Thanks. Boom. Give me a few more. Really? Okay. Huh. Be funny if somehow the drop chance is affected by overkill and the issue was I hadn't upgraded it enough. I don't know. I'm actually doing pretty good damage. Would not have expected a thousand damage straight from that, even though it is a weapon skill with a pretty long charge up time. And there is another Mesmer soldier. Thank you. And that's the end of that group. So is there anything in this enemy encampment? I thought it'd be nice if there was a chest or something, but it does not look like that is the case. We got ah, our first fire coil. Device of fire used by Vesper soldiers, lingering embers, blown into a coil, craftable item, tiny fire snakes from the spot that it is thrown. Writhing snakes pursue foes, fire is a symbol of the crusade, even Mesmer's rank and file soldiers could wield it. Okay. Let's just check inside the church real quick. Yeah, so it seems it's all black pyreflies. Hmm. Fair enough. So is that soldier going to be back in here, or... Okay, it seems that that black knight only spawns in once. Makes some sense. But eventually, I'd like to get the Mesmer Soldier's Spear. Every item ahead, yeah. Technically not necessary, necessary, just... If you don't use it, you're going to suffer. Okay. Let's... Go back up here. Work our way around again. I think past Scorch Ruins would be a good measurement, but, so this goes down, eventually loops around to here, a sort of water area with a bit of raw ruins. Hmm. Cool place. I wonder how much it's going to be all around here. Oh well. Going back to the gravesite plane, once we get close to grave birds, I think. Switching to the hammer will be a good idea. But we got this going. 
like how that gold just drops down that way. But this is, if I recall correctly, going to be the final dungeon. The shadow tree over there connects to, I think it would be shadow keep, probably. Well, we'll see. Keep on moving. Do I have deflecting in my flask? Not yet. Save that for a real boss. Oh, thanks. And black flames protection. Oh, all right. Oh, we poised through that successfully. That's actually kind of a surprise to me. Oh, well, I, that didn't hit. Oh, come on. What? Huh? A grab attack? What in the? Okay. Thanks. I I hate these curse blades. One, two, three. Okay. Luckily, they're pretty easy to just stagger lock, but still, that felt a little bothersome. Okay. Here we are. Black Steel Great Hammer. Probably our best source of holy damage, and at least one that does not require a spell slot. So that's the interesting idea, is that in theory, I could take... Get a number of weapons that deal elemental damage types. Just use all my spell slots for buffs, as I do right now. Oh, okay. Fun. Can I... Thanks. Luckily, the slam works just fine. Okay. Uh, how many more of you are around here immediately? That's the worry. It's just animals. Okay. Decent amount of grave birds. I think sort of the square made by scorched ruins and the pathway and the side of grace would be good. Oh, hello! How are you doing? I'm alright. A little bit tired, but alright. We get drip marking tomorrow. I'm excited to see who's coming up in 5.1 and of course also excited to just actually play not long. Nothing of no, it's not as if I fought any bosses or anything. Are you alive at least? Yeah, yeah. What is interesting is that people kind of predicted it, myself included, but we got pretty much explicit confirm- interesting statue, explicit confirmation that every tribe, its abilities are connected to the relevant dragon slash dinosaur, which means that Shulanen, or Shulonen, or however you're, you're, we're gonna pronounce your name, is gonna have abilities that are like Kachina, probably a little better than Kachina's, because Ka apparently Shulanen, since she's supposed to basically be a... What is this thing? Is this a gray bird? That's a gray bird. It's supposed to be sort of a leopard. It's probably gonna be, a, apparently going to be able to scale walls faster than the funny Kachina car. What do, you, what do you mean by interesting plot twist? Oh, and this you mean. Okay. Thanks. Oh, they don't seem to really count as undead. They're not taking extra damage from the undead multiplier. That's kind of strange. There should be at least one dragon today, I think. There's supposed to be a ghost flame dragon somewhere here. So we can take that thing down. Very weak to holy damage, and weak to things with an anti-undead modifier, so... A ghost flame dragon. Don't get it twisted. Which means it's it's connected to the ghost flame from... <sighs> base game Elden Ring, and it's sort of a decaying skeletal dragon. Also, this is completely inaccessible. This plateau has nothing on it. It's kind of silly. Are you afraid of ghosts? Okay. No, you're not allowed. Okay. Okay, just checking. I wanted to know if I could. I would. It would scare you, so I could just point and laugh, you know. Okay. Keep on going. How many more grave birds are around here? 
Scorch Ruins are in the middle. It might be good to try to poke out those now. Lots and lots of those undead. Hmm. Keep on hitting. Good hammer. How much more for the level? Relatively close. And oh, right, you can see we've got the gold because we've got the Realm of Shadow buff. And that. Four, five, six. Got about a 20% damage increase already. I believe it maxes out around 200 to. As in 200 of base total. Might be. Okay. And on Starlight and. Oh! Another one of you guys. Come on. Thought that would hit a bit better, but range on this is not as great as I was expecting. Oh well. Let's keep working our way around the ruins. I guess we could put on Golden Bath. I'm going to need to heal back up again. Welcome back. Don't die. But what is interesting is that we also got a week today, quote unquote, who knows whether it's accurate or not, that. 3 point, that 5.3 would have two 5-star characters, which people believe will be Madame Ping and Mavuika. Maybe, probably. Because that is presumably also going to be Lantern right? in addition to, apparently, also the final Not One story patch, which, if so, you know, I'm not sure that would be a great idea because of how overloaded it would be. 10,000 runes. The Shadow Tree is the shadow of the Ur Tree. Those who fell in the realm of shadow. The grace shines ever so brilliantly. Well. Come on. Well, for one, you can't get her if you don't play the game. Pearl Calling Finger Remedy. Okay. That's right. I could just use the horse. Let's keep hitting these guys. Oh, well, alright. Not. Ah. Come on, hit. There we go. Alright. Well, well, mind you, they're not going to make her old, old. There's no way they do that. She definitely also just look a bit more distinctive, too. So I guess it depends on how much you like. I was going to say, it depends on how much you like that one young design we got in the cutscene. If you're fine with that, you'd be fine with it. But apparently people say she's probably going to be Hydro Plunge DPS. Polearm. It is a nice design, but I think it, it is important to specify so people know what to accurately expect, I suppose. Okay, come on. Anything up here or... I wonder what's in all the Scorched Ruins. Go up top over here. That. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, but people say that she's probably going to be a hydro porn based on what? I really don't know. But that's what people seem to expect. Let's go inside here. Apparently there is a talisman in here. We'll see. Aha, uh -huh, here we go. And this is. What is this? It's. The Blade of Mercy, right, and that Thin Bloodstained Dagger, no longer fit for use, raises attack power after each critical hit. Horn Scent employed this to honorably end the suffering of a compatriot after claiming numerous lives. The dagger is now broken, has acquired a spectral aura. Wait, what do you what do you mean by that? That that wasn't an engineer, that was Oh, I forget his name, but he also showed up in the Iridescence Tour event. It was Dvorak, Dvorak. Because he was named after Anton Dvorak. That's right. I don't know if I can get up to that tower in any way. But he came back for the Ito Rhythm Game event. It, it was definitely interesting that they had that whole Ito singing event. Because a lot of people liked the English music. And it was okay, I suppose. But it was definitely very much about the fact that they got... Takanori Masasugo, if I recall, if that's how you say his name, I think that's his name, or goes by the name TM Revolution, Japanese rock pop star guy. They got him to voice Ito. So they were basically just 
trying to find an excuse to make him sing. And it was, it was good. He was really good in the Japanese. But, it was, well, it's also kind of like when they made Huta rap. Well, it was, they're fans. They're fanboys. They wanted to have a game with him singing in it because they like him. Hefty Fire Pot, Greater Potentate, Rumwinds Near and Far, Haunted by the Grotesque Practice, The Village of Birth, which was stuffing people into pots, stuffed great pots with all manner of things. Hefty Fire Pot, too bad I don't use pots for anything. Okay. Yeah, who, who would you put in your dream game? If you had infinite resources, like Mahoyo basically does. Who would you cast and what would you make them do? Okay. And you would make them kiss. Hefty cracked pot. Oh, a hefty cracked pot. Hefty empty pot, a hefty cracked pot. Greater potentates of body village, craft these and store them in a frozen jail. So those are just really big pots. Not resin. And... Oh, okay, fair. And... But that would give you the opportunity to make them do that and then pay them, too. Even better, right? But as I was saying... I might have said this already, but there are going to be a lot of sort of new local legends in that one, and they're going to be a bit different in that they're going, to, I've definitely told you, but they're going to be in Everjail-like structures, like the Everjails in Elden Ring, little sort of pocket dimensions to fight in. Burned as sinners, burned away, put to the torch by Mesmer and his lot. What did we do to deserve such a fate? We were lived our lives and lived in peace. It... You can use the word revolutionary. I don't, I don't think terrorist is the image they want to have. But as I was saying... One of them brings back the parry mechanics from that one Inazuma event, apparently, which really, really excites me. I had a lot of fun with that one. You know, the Ayaka outfit one. But, and that's... Any more? Oh, we got Ghost Dog. Okay. Hmm. Wait, so they actually call themselves terrorists? That's actually insane. Oh my goodness. Well, it... I mean, it, it's one thing for someone to consider you a terrorist. It's another thing to call yourself a terrorist. Zemmin wonders yet. Rasta from Shirley Forge. Curse, death from Mesmer's head. America's children, each and all. Okay. I was wondering. But, that's interesting. So, if there's a way up into that tower, I presume it would be from way down below. Uh, I... I feel like they must lack some level of Western linguistic context. I, I would think. You know, not everything perfectly translates. Not resin. But I thought it was resin. Let me see. Well, in theory, split damage should work a bit better in Land of Shadow because of the AR boost, meaning that the split resistances won't matter as much, but still. How much damage would Bloodhound's Fane do? Let's just see. Oh, it is actually a bit better. Oh, well. Uh, it. Uh. Uh. Hmm. I guess it's a scaling thing. Well, it's actually a. About the same, about the same. You, some of them carry treasure boxes and drop some balloons, but kind of been around here before, but still. Hmm. Should probably be able to work my way up to. I'm gonna save Castle Ensis for as late as possible, probably. 
given that... I wonder if I could get up here. It's going to be the way to Shadow Keep. Oh, also, the Elden Ring DLC has ships. I'm not kidding. Okay, let me see. Come on. Let me see. Oh, they're all around that tree. That's rather unpleasant. Let's check this out. Keep on looking here. About what? Oh, oh, the AO3 pages were for the band. I thought you meant for Elden Ring. Yeah, there are. It... Before you fight Mesmer, you have to fight his girlfriend. She has her own separate dungeon. Oh, so do they just keep dropping the horn tenders? Okay. Ooh, uh, that hit, but... Come on, keep hitting the dog. Okay. Actually, pretty good to fight on horseback. Spear Gravestone. Oh, they did not drop the Horn Tender this time. That's sad. Oh, I, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure you did. Especially after the DLC. I mean, given how much marriage is important to the lore, I mean, they're. they're there, there is an ending that involves one, technically. Come on. There is... Okay, that one was just running away. How many of these are just animals? Well, it... You know how that makes me feel. Hmm. So they just have a lot of sort of... special shadow versions of a lot of base materials. To make sure that you can't use base game materials to craft the stuff you get in here, which honestly is really, really lame. What is? What is? The materials? I mean, it's interesting and adds to a bit more lore, but it's kind of silly. It. Maybe I should feed you to wild animals or something. Things are chugging a bit. Bit. Just see what I can do with the settings because. Just see. Texture quality, anti aliasing, depth of field, motion blur. I don't like motion blur. I hate motion blur. What do you mean by make the animals sick? What are you talking about? Oh, and I think this should be revered spirit ash. Yeah, all that'll do is make my horse a bit bulkier. But what, what what, did that have to do with anything? I'm wondering what the context of that is. What does that have to do with the topic at hand? Okay, let me see. Oh, oh, because I said I would send animals to eat you. I... Right, right. At this point, I'm sorry. I just... I, I say these things without really thinking. So this is... Oh, there was a larval tier just sitting there. Okay. That... Oh, okay. So this is same name, but slightly different. Exceptionally rare creature that burgeons from spirit graves and lives only a fleeting existence. Neither flesh nor spirit, but something in between. Material required by the amber egg. created by Renala, right? Yeah. The other one was... Part creature, part sort of substance. This one is part creature, part spirit. I've realized that I actually paid attention to the calories I eat. Well, for you it would be kilo calories. Because you're European. But I only eat about 400, 600 calories a day most of the time. And I realized that I should probably change that. So I have more energy just for things in general. So I've realized that, you know, I have to start working soon, for better or worse. Probably like 400 to 600, generally speaking. 
me see. Okay, so I think this area marked out by the mausoleum, the pathway in this doorway, and that cross would be good to try to work through. Is this... It can't get rid of these map markers, but I think this might be a mausoleum too. Hmm. But... Hmm. You know, when I'm back at home... Well, as in, before when I was still in college, I would always lose weight. When I was back at, It's way too little. It's way too little. When I was back at home, I would always lose a lot of weight. And I realized it was because I was just constantly underfeeding myself. Because when I'm at home, you know, if I make something, usually I have to cook it for myself. You know, there are snacks in the pantry, but... Generally speaking, a lot of them are... More unhealthy than I'd usually like to eat. So I just don't eat all that much, and end up losing weight. And, among other things, it would be nice to just have more energy. So, come on. Oh, they're rolling at me. Okay. Hi there. Slam that bird. Then, you are... Is that a shadow undead? It's just another funny goat thing. Yeah, there are a lot of goats that do that, actually. There are some that do it with the lightning. Which makes them a bit like the bone reels. No, I'm... I'm just gonna start getting... Cheap meal replacement shake powder. Because it's actually really, really cost efficient and time efficient too. And pretty healthy. I would be probably a bit better nourished than I currently am too. And it'll save me a lot of time. Okay. Let's drink some of that. Yeah. Because I can. I'm still being gonna be getting a lot more calories. I mean, I, I can send you the link. It, it's literally health food. The downside is that it doesn't taste particularly good, but that was not something I particularly concerned myself with. You know, it's nice when food tastes good, but it's not my primary priority. Hmm. There's the mausoleum that I went through before. Okay. How does... Keep on moving. So this will not let me get up top there. But it... So how am I going to get up here? Is there going to be a spirit spring? Or maybe from down or over here? And I have to get around through this spot. You know, all will be revealed in due time, but still. Hmm. Because we have been down into that mausoleum where I fought that knight and got... Oh, the armor that I thought was going to be much better than it actually was. It... The entire point of the shake powder is that it's just really, really easy. It's just you put the serving size in the shaker bottle for breakfast and for lunch, and then for dinner you eat one of their hot food cups. It's supposed to be idiot-proof. I, I know you are, but I'm saying that you don't have to insult yourself to do it, and that if you, ha if you were interested, it would actually be decently easy. So can I use this to get up? Just quick force this. Maybe. Oh, this is silly. I can't get any higher up, but... Okay, so presumably this is just a way to get down from here. Oh, well. Okay. Hmm. Got a lot of these eels. My question is, how much damage is this going to do to them? Hmm. Well, the big thing about it is, 
it gives you oh, around 12,000 calories a day if you eat, you know, the two meal shakes and the one solid meal that you're sort of supposed to have. And that, oh goodness. Come on. Okay, but it does seem as if we want what hands fitting for this. Well, the other option is just... Why is that her business? If it's for your health, what veto power should she have? Oh my goodness. Come on. Please, please. If you just don't have any interest or, you know, personally would not like it, that's one thing. But, okay. Okay, interesting. Strong attack did not do that much. Okay. Come on. Two and... Oh, what? Oh, horse died. Okay. Now I should probably be engaging these things on. Ooh, I did not know that was a lingering hitbox. How do I... Okay. Uh, is the head a weak point? I can't tell. Oh, come on. Uh. Well, whether it is or not, I'm not sure I can actually hit it. Okay. Ooh. That? No, that was actually that one. Thank you. Mm. Fair enough. But... Can I... One charge. Bring the horse back. Okay. I do seem to be doing a bit more damage when we're on horseback. Okay. Come on. What is my... My stamina regen feels a little neutered for some reason. I wonder if it's because of the eels. Whatever. Mm -hmm. It's not that I need to kill these guys, but still. Come on, come on. One, two. Okay. Oh, here's some news that you won't like hearing. More progress is apparent. Well, the real news that I also would not like to hear, that I also know is what I said before, that fa Fantasy Life got delayed. Oh, goodness. Which, I guess is kind of bad, but it also gives me more space for other stuff, like the new Sonic, new Zelda, etc. But, as I was saying... Apparently, progress is being made on the Fate Extra remake. Which, in its original form on the PSP, was a very mid RPG with basically rock, paper, scissors mechanics. But, the remake version is going to be a deck builder type game, kind of like Slay the Spire, if you've heard of it. That's the one Nero's from. So there you go, there's your bad news. Hmm. So... Just see... Where do I go next? Go up and around here? <laughs> you actually didn't hear it? It's actually really funny. It's that... The the remake of Fate Extra is... There was an update and they're apparently making decent progress. No release date yet, but it hasn't been cancelled or anything, so... It's still coming out. Or so they say. It's the one that Nero's from. Originally on the PvP. It's okay, I just found it funny. So there you go, there's your bad news. Yes! That's true! <laughs> that's... That's why. Tell me something I don't know. But... 
Uh, speak for yourself. I repay kindness with kindness and hatred with hatred. It's very Mesopotamian of me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead. That's overkill. The horseback attacks are fun, but very slow. Horse is fun, but for better or worse, it definitely does make the game world feel frankly a little smaller. Hmm. I think the ghostling dragon is around here in this lake. What is this, Undertale? Maybe. Actually, it's that it's that one song about Overwatch. The No Mercy song. I never played Overwatch. I never had a way to, and also I just I just don't like FPSs. They're not for me, except I never did it. I just never actually did it. I didn't even do True Pacifist. A lot of it was, it came out when I was a freshman in high school. And a lot of my friends were playing it around the same time as me. And I got ahead of them. I beat it before them and then waited to catch up because they got really, really ass mad about spoilers. Even incredibly minor accidental ones. I just shut up and kind of ended up forgetting about it. And then they got really into doing all the other runs, but at that point I'd lost interest. So I just did one neutral run and nothing else. Okay. It is what it is. It... It's life. There, there are many other worse things that I could be complaining about instead. Than not getting every ending in Undertale. It... There, there, there's a big difference between not wanting to spend money and not being able to spend money. You know, that's legitimate, but also the game is 15 bucks. Okay. And if you really had to, you could pirate it. I, I think that just not particularly wanting, liking the gameplay or finding it appealing is... Just as legitimate, if not more so. Well, I think that makes conversation kind of difficult. Okay. Uh, I'm looking. It. Grave birds. Maybe it's only the first time you kill them that they drop smithing stones. So I killed a few some other times, and they dropped a decent amount of upgrade materials. Is that another grave bird, or... So the grave birds are basically golem versions of the death birds. Yeah, so we can strike and holy damage. Hmm. This over here is, I believe, it's Belurat Tower Settlement. If I recall correctly, there's going to be an invasion when we get in close, and in addition to that, there should also be... Hmm. Hmm. Probably a buff somewhere, but this is Enir Ilim. The thorns around here are kind of like the Urgery in the base game. Understandable. But for what it's worth, just so you know, Undertale does not use the mouse. At all, really. It was made in RPG, it was made in Game Maker, and it, it's just the arrow keys, basically. Might be WSD. But. So does this lead down there, or? Can't even tell. But basically everything around Castle Ensis is where I want to be right now. We'll see what happens. We do have this. The three path cross. Frankly, it looks more like four paths. 
I don't know. Okay. Well, it is what it is. Frankly, I would expect that you would still probably, especially now, enjoy playing it more in English than in Italian. Because a lot of the game's humor relies on English wordplay. That would not translate all that well. Hmm. Is that up there? Can I reach that? Oh, this is just if you go down farther up here, it whoops back in. Okay. It... I feel like Italians hate a lot of things. Including other Italians. Is that right? Thank you. Black Flames Protection. Come on, Sacred Blade. Okay, we gotcha. I thought for a second that might miss. Okay, good. Hello there, Slam. There we are. Slipping Stone 5. Okay, we did get another one. That's good. Loop around the edge of this here. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, I thought you said you hate playing stuff. I'm Italian. I thought you were, you were saying that you hated playing things because you were Italian. Well, me too. I think everyone's a hater these days. It's very common. Oh, come on. Oh, well, yeah. I'm mean. <laughs> hmm, any other gray birds around this area, or...? Mm -hmm. Got these weird spires up here. What's that in the middle? Well, like I've said before, that, that actually kind of makes it worse. Which I'm fine with. But... As I was saying, what really interests me about the confirmation that not long characters are going to have abilities that mimic, and what's interesting is that they specified tribe and not and not the vision element, which raises... Oh, are these just a bunch of horn scent? Okay, these are just a bunch of horn scent, it seems, so definitely got to be slashing for them. Hi, hello. Okay, thanks. Oh, please. What kind of spells are they using? Oh, they got fire. Okay. But the fact that they specified that it was based on the tribe rather than being based on... Oh, the backhand blades! And those are... Curved blade, wielded the backhand grip, type of weapon, wielded by horn set for generations. Stellar combat associated with this weapon is marked by spinning slashes, gouging thrust attacks, blind swap, leave in close quarters, take advantage of the enemy's blind spot, whirl them from the side, it's determined for steady strike from swoops below the opponent's guard, and this is basically... Those are basically the Cell Sword Twin Blades from Dark Souls 3, so really, really nice. No, I can't rap. It's one of the things I can't do. Which is probably a good thing. But, as I was saying, the fact that it says that it's based on vision element, instead of just, no, no, the tribe rather than the village vision element, raises the question of what they're going to do with Satwali. That's more of a public speaking thing. Because apparently Satwali is going to be a, a cryo character, and... As far as we know, there is no Cryo Dragon. There is no Cryo Tribe. Which means that she's either not going to have any kind of... Right, we got that painting. Actually, mark that. She's either not going to have any abilities at all. Maybe she might have completely unique abilities. Or maybe there's a Cryo Dragon and Tribe that just we don't know about yet. Or that she might, because like I said, it says that it's based on the tribe instead of the vision element. We don't necessarily have confirmation yet that 
the people in each tribe can only get visions of their tribe's dragon's element. You know, it seems like it would be easy for that to be true. But weakers have said things that run a bit contrary to that, and also just we don't know yet. Yeah, well... The big thing is that in the area... In the Sacred Flame Stadium area, that's sort of the center of Nawant, as far as we know, there is a set of six banners representing presumably six tribes, and it has every color except cryo whitish blue. The colors of all the seven elements we have in game already, except for that one. So people are presuming, and it does make some sense, that there is no cryo tribe. There were people who expected, and I was particularly partial to that speculation, that all of them would be basically fire dragons at base with other elemental adaptations, kind of like the Bathysmal Bishops in Enconomia, and therefore there would be no Pyro tribe, and it would just have Mavuika with completely unique abilities, and presumably maybe another Pyro character from there. But it doesn't seem like they'll be doing that, which raises the question of, are we going to get other Pyro Vision or Pyro Trap characters that presumably have whatever ability Mavuika has, which... Motorcycle is one option, I think that's probably going to be part of it. But people are also saying that Flight is also probably going to be part of the equation. Which I think is also decently possible. Especially since we got... We have the Pyrosaurian in a big form is one of the bosses for the coming version. And it can fly. Its whole gimmick is that it can fly. Well, people have been making a lot of Ghost Rider jokes because of that. I think this is where I want to go after everything else. Just go over that bridge after that because it pretty neatly divides the starting areas. But, as I was saying... Hi, Kozu, how are you doing? Now, the other thing is that we also have the Animo tribe, which, according to some leash dialogue, is presumably also going to have flight as an ability associated. So it raises the question of how they would differentiate Pyro flight from Animo flight for the dragons and the associated characters. And in addition to that, just... I guess it would make sense if there were multiple animal characters, but only Mavuika and maybe Shibalanke for fire. That said, I think... People have not said this, but I think there's a decent chance that Shibalanke is actually the Traveler. And that when we get Pyro Traveler, it's going to be stronger than other Traveler variants in the past. Because we're not getting Pyro Traveler in 6.0. I mean, 5.0. Pyro Traveler is not ready yet. So, maybe it might be stronger. Hopefully it's stronger. But, either way, I think there's a decent chance that we're actually Shibalong, okay? Because, among other things, the statements around resurrection... There are some weeks that suggest connected, I think, partly to Kanisha's story quest. That the way that resurrection works in the context of Natlon is not just bringing back the same person, but basically bringing back a different person with the same name who will occupy a similar role, very similar to Tartaglia's sort of connection to the fate of Aias. can upgrade that. You know, I hate to tell you this, but Tartaglia really is just one massive fate reference, and being named Aias is actually part of that. Okay, we should take the tree spear out of storage. Sort the chest. Melee armaments. And we need the tree spear back. For, I think it's a great spear, so it should be around here. We we'll use that for the sacred order buff. Actually, we could just put that on Assassin's Approach, so never mind. So let's just put that back in. 
What other weapons? I don't have anything I don't really want to use. So let's put Sacred Order back on this dagger. And that would give me increased damage buff against un undead, which I'll fight soon. Sure, hold my own. And then the horn sent over here, telling us about the cro crosses. After Mekla, no enemy to me. So the secret is they're all actually brainwashed and hate each other. Or they would hate each other if they weren't brainwashed. And when the brainwashing breaks, then they start hating each other. As they should, I suppose. Because the Horn Scent was a victim of basically a genocide by the people of the Urdri. And is only cooperating with the rest due to that brainwashing. But the others are generally, if not necessarily zealots, some of them are zealots, just otherwise aligned with the Urtri among on other grounds, so... In the end, we'll get in a nice big fight, a nice big group fight between some of the NPCs we meet here along with a bunch of others. What do you even mean by that? What is that emote even supposed to mean? Well, it, it doesn't take that long. The big thing is that one of Tartag one of the characters that Tartagli is based on is Archer. And one of Archer's abilities, one of the weapons he can create, because his entire deal is basically copying other people's weapons, is the shield of Ajax slash Aeus from Greek mythology. And Tartaglia's fighting style in general is very similar to Archer's. So that just deepens the connection. W what did we even do? Who? What do you mean by Inazu- Oh, oh. Well, so was one guy in Pokemon. I think... He might have been Apollo. Yeah, because the, the new Rocket admins from Heart Gold, Soul Silver, and the original Japanese were all named after Greek gods. Because it was... The one woman was... Oh, hello. Hi. Oh, goodness. Is she excited? Yeah, don't die. Hello. You know me too. Yeah, good luck to her. Is she more is she more accident prone? Oh, ouch. But as I was saying, because in, in the original Japanese it was Apollo and Athena, but then one was named Proton, I believe. You mean Inazuma 11? Twitch Firefox? Uncommon Firefox L? It's unpleasant. Particularly brave even among the red mains, some are salt forward, striking pose with the armament, additional strike, performance, and additional input, and this is actually worse than normal light actually worse than normal lines cost somehow. That's sad. Well it's worse in that it, it deals more damage, but it takes longer and deals less poise damage. And that there's a village over there with flies in it. Seven T V What is seven T V nightly? Is that like Plex? Well, may maybe don't do that then. I feel like this is a problem with an easier solution than you want on. Come on, come on. It. Be careful what you say. Oh, okay. Is that similar to better TTV? I know there are a lot of, a lot of plugins related to emotes. Yeah, just, please don't die. It would really, really drag down the day. Not resin, but I thought it was resin. Okay, okay, so there's another set of grace over there. So that could be an okay time to rest. <sighs> Wondering what might be the, at the end of this little village over here. Oh, okay. Interesting. So, does that allow you to have more emotes than you're normally allowed to, or... What specifically does it allow you to do? I feel like I should 
try to figure out something like that. Especially when the server got boosted today, I realized that I should probably put some emotes in or something. But the question is what they'd be. I feel like putting it up to a community vote could lead to untoward results. Okay, but in here there are a bunch of flies. What do you mean by that? Like Hello Kitty? There was an announcement recently that I saw of... A Junji Ito... Why would I put in a dog poop emote when there's already a perfectly good poop emote just in Unicode? Abandoned Ailing Village. Interesting. Ah, uh, okay. Handles on chat messages. Just a black pyrofly. So is this just part of the village itself, or...? Why is not liking dog poop an insult to you? That feels perverse. Youch. Oh, so that deals about as much. So split damage is a lot better in Land of Shadow. I, I think, I think it's subjective. I think it's up to individual interpretation. Fly mold. Species of fungus known for its deathly sweet stench, which you will use for crafting items, semi hunting manflies. Cultivated using the flesh and blood of manflies can serve as pot innards. Well, it. Why are you being the linguistic prescriptivist now? Feel. This feels wrong. Slam and can I get the. Mm, I couldn't get the critical off. I was in a pretty bad position for that. It's Spirit Ash, but I get some of that. Okay. But I think we'd take two now, maybe, to level up the Blessing? Maybe. There aren't as many compared to Shadow Tree Blessing. What do you... What do you mean by that? I said that you're the one... You're the one who gets mad at me when I talk about the right way to spell things and say things. There's no way to win here. I feel like I'm just being destroyed from all sides. That's a fun critical. And... Oh, we were able to actually jump over its lunge attack. That was nice, too. I think... Spelling it T-E-H-E -E is the best way to annoy people. And given that I think he was trying to annoy people, in this case, I think it is correct. That, that doesn't happen all that often. I think you're overestimating how often that happens on purpose to make me look bad. I, I think this is just a continuation of the earlier battle. The war has never really ended. Oh wait, so it's Teha? Are you okay? Why is your eyelid twitching? How oh, it hurts from very tip to toe. Uh, help me, I'm just asking. I'm a human still. Okay, please take care of yourself. The reason I yet suffer so. Who are you... E Who are you saying that to? Who are you calling that? Me? Well, it... If you do, we'll all miss you. Oh, okay. So is this... They're not undead. And that does not kill. Okay. General form. It... I've heard people say, and I do actually happen to agree, as someone who has experienced sort of the tail end of the earlier internet pre... just omnipresent social media, modern social media. That is not true. How else would I learn about Italy? But... As I was saying, just... I went on a few forums back in the day, including... Some Toho Project forums. There aren't a lot of... It's kind of weird how popular Toho still is, honestly. Speaking of that, I should... Play more Toho. But, as I was saying... 
You know, there are a lot of older forums, just the older forum style in which it was never really a question of, you know, getting upvotes or likes or there was no real indication of popularity other than just getting responses, which in itself did lead to its unique... I, I actually don't know what slash B means. As in just slash B, is that a tone indicator? Does that stand for bot? Is there a bot tone indicator now? Oh, you mean slash B slash. There was... An interesting conspiracy theory. Well, not really conspiracy theory, but just speculation. That... I, I don't know whether I believe it. I don't really believe it. But it's a funny idea that... Taylor Swift used to go on slash B a long, long time ago, which... Frankly, I doubt is true for a number of reasons. Especially since a lot of people who pushed it did it because... Th there was this really weird phenomenon back in the day. Many years ago. Well, it... Where and... It, it, it's as weird and uncomfortable as it is amusing. Okay, ailment talisman. Well, it... Though things have changed a bit, maybe a little in the past. She 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 cares a lot about making money, which you know makes sense. Which there there was a portion in a documentary about her life, for better or worse, where she was talking to her dad, who's very involved in her music business stuff, basically saying, you know, why can't I support LGBT stuff more publicly? I want to do that. And he said, well, fewer people would buy your records, and that just, he just immediately shut up without resistance. Which is just you know okay. Well, to be fair, it. Wait, what? Why? Wh what did they do? Soul taken by sickness. When certain ailments are triggered, Talon grants resistance to the same ailment. When the weak were infected with a dreaded fly sickness, they perished well before the metamorphosis could take hold. Oddly, those who were cared for the infected made certain they were given a proper burial were never inflicted themselves. Interesting. Name docs? That's insane. That's so cruel. Not the name docs. Guys, it's America. <laughs> we got America in chat. But what's interesting is that there was a video I saw, a short little video talking about this. Basically, it's unclear whether it was a sort of spiritual punishment in that the fly sickness afflicted people who did not care, take care of the other flies or if it was just a mundane disease. And it was a matter of basically actually proper burials, keeping pathogens away. We'll never know. I'm not sure if Eldering conforms to the germ theory of disease anyway. I feel like Miasma Theory might fit its fantasy vibes a bit more. Well, I don't know. Maybe his name was Elmich. It... You, you never know. You know maybe... What, what if my name on here was Bobby John? And my name ended up being neither Bobby nor John. Kozu, I had to, I had to actively let your death threat through. I did it because it was funny. But, so what's through here? Well, it, if I did not be a hypocrite, mind you. But as I was saying... As I was saying... Ba basically, th there are a lot of people, especially image board types, back in the day who thought that Taylor Swift was secretly a white supremacist, semi-ironically. They called her their Aryan goddess, which is semi-ironically, which is pretty crazy. Well, we already know you're Italian. How many furnace visitors are in here? Three? Oh, greater potence cook. It is! Greater po oh, hefty furnace pot. This is what you used to take down the big furnace golems. So we got one from killing one, but there are some of them that take these big furnace pots. Check out some of these throwing pots and hefty furnace pot. Oh, we need embers of mesmer first. Hex of the furnace burns away both body and soul. Purity thus expunged. One calls it cleansing. Severe fire damage. Answering what? Now I'm worried. It. I, I saw someone 
describe Taylor yesterday's basically the sort of sort of a modern woman's ubermensch that she's basically and I don't mean this in a derogatory way at all because a lot of what people were trying to say is okay if this is what Taylor is what's the equivalent for men but basically the sort of idealized version of themselves that a lot of women hold you know essentially that for a lot of women and I mean this with the utmost sympathy. A lot of people think of Taylor as sort of what they would be like if they achieve their personal image of success. And like I said, people were trying to figure out who the equivalent for men would be. And there are a lot of different answers given. Because pe people actually talk about that a lot. And I think... There, there, some people try to make the case, you know, buy it or don't, that there can't really be one because there's a lot more sort of divergence and difference in the sort of male experience, quote-unquote, between different men. Which, again, you know, take that as you will. But there are a lot of really, really funny answers. Fair. Yeah, yeah, because does he does he say does he say that Taylor is for the girls and the gays? Okay, so who's in here? This is oh another fly. Ain't no way about what. This is what is this? Another greater potentate's cookbook, and that's a hefty fly pot. Huh. Check that out. Let's see where hefty fly pot sanguine amaryllis feed found in waste feed on blood turn to this is pretty we short lived what why would you do that <laughs> that's horrible i swear i'm gonna have to it's How do I even, how do I even penalize you for that? Well, I, I, I figured as much, but. It's just, I, I feel like that warrants some kind of punishment, but I don't know how, why, or what. Be kind, please. Okay. That's the ghost flame dragon over there. I may as well just ride out and kill it now, but. We deal magic damage primarily. So I think... Let's just get all of our buffs up. Starlight is nice enough. We can put that dagger on. Sacred Order dagger. You know, I guess... As long as everyone agrees... I don't think I could call it okay, but... Suit yourself, I guess. Uh, the world we live in, I swear. Question is what this guy's gonna drop. The Great Katana should be around here too, if I recall correctly. Take this up and... Sacred Order. Thank you. Italian ones? What's well, interesting is that this thing has rotted flesh. It's kind of crazy. Oh, come on. Hit! I uh, really? Alright. Uh, oh, please. How can I... Uh, what if I uh, dodge, fully charge the heavy, and... What? No! No! Oh, please. Can I... Oh, come on. That did kind of hit. We are doing pretty decent damage with this. Can I... Uh, nice! Did we get the critical? We did get the critical. I mean, we did get room for the critical. Let's hit you in the head. That's one. Two! Ooh, really good damage. Nice. Let's... There we are. Nice. Very good. Great enemy foe. How much... It's not that much in the way of runes. We got Dragon Heart and a somber ancient dragon smithing stone. And... Okay, interestingly enough, it seems... There's a Ghost Flame Breath incantation you can get. 
from killing them, but it seems that you need to kill all three, because there are three in total. The nice thing is that, as you can see, we did very nice damage from the various anti-undead buffs we were able to stack there. Very nice. I like this weapon. I like this weapon a lot. So somewhere around here is supposed to be the Great Katana. Again, we also got a somber ancient dragon smithing stone. Oh, there we have it! So presumably someone tried to use it to slay the dragon and it didn't work. We like you. I am not the one who called you slurs. But if you have to go, you have to go. Thank you for popping in, CS Dragon. Large katana with a long, heavy blade, a weapon unique to warriors of the land of reeds, designed for aggression. This armament requires the wielder to throw their entire body into swinging at the slashing attacks of its own to edge insight blood loss. I. It's an interesting one. Overhead stance, a skill that starts with the blade held high in a ready stance, execute a normal attack from the stance, step forward and slash downwards, or a strong attack to deliver a series of downward slashes. Oh, okay, okay. But. If either of you are interested. I do also intend on making my server a little nicer soon, because among other things, someone boosted it today. It was very nice. So, among other things, I'd like to add, well, one, a way to filter out bots into emotes. So it should hopefully be nicer soon, especially since, if I'm lucky, new Genshin... If only I could censor that when I say that, you know, put in the asterisk... New patch should bring more people in soon. We'll see what happens. As fun as Elden Ring is, it's not really flavor, flavor of the month anymore. Because the DLC came out about two months ago. And, you know, there's only so much you can really talk about numbers, but still. Come on, before it becomes uncouth. Yeah, but... New Zelda comes out next month, too. And then a little bit after that is... Sonic Generations Remake with Shadow added in, so I'm excited for that, too. That'll be fun, especially since, as I think I've said before, I never actually got a chance to play the original Sonic Generations. So that's just a bridge up to Bell your rat. It... I don't have a way to... I'm not... Citra is annoying. I'm not going to fuck around with 3DS emulation. Especially since... 3DS games are a bitch and a half to play unless you have an actual touchscreen. I... I need to find my 3DS, get someone to jam a capture card in, and then I can maybe try some 3DS game streaming. But, until that happens, I'm not doing that. Okay. Especially since Fantasy Life is a long, long game. Uh, when, when I pick it up, I would be going rather slowly, because it's not... It's not a game you really can rush. Or at least not a game you should. No, what I mean is... It's about the capture card. What I mean is that to hook it up to... The computer, so that stream... That video output could be put through the computer onto stream. That would take... Hardware expertise or sending it over to someone to do for me. Yeah. Which isn't impossible, but first I need to find my 3DS, and I don't actually know where it is right now. Especially since I would also need... What dungeon is this? This is... Oh, the Bellurat Jail. Oh, right, because it's under Bellurat Tower Settlement. The SD card slot is also broken, and I need to get that fixed too. So... That's going to be its own whole thing. My question is, is there a boss in there? Because apparently, Ruined Forge Lava Intake over here doesn't even have a boss. Hmm. Let's mark that with a marker. Well, I guess, what else would I mark it with? Hmm. But, apparently, and what's interesting is that, I'm sure you saw that they're going to give us all a free Standard Banner 5 star of our choice for the anniversary patch, and that that's also now just something that's going to happen every year. And that they also specifically promised that more characters would get added to Standard as time went on. Among other things, people as a result of that are wondering what not one characters might end up being Standard Banner. 
And a lot of people think it's probably going to be Chaska. The animo gal who looks kind of like Chlorine, but green. Who apparently is going to be an animo bow. And there are people speculating that she's going to use Swirl for offense in some interesting kind of way. Because the current... The Notlan Craftable though increases attack and elemental mastery. The more Notlan characters are non... Hold her elemental type elemental characters in the party. A lot of people hate her design. I'm ambivalent. In the end, I roll for everyone, so I primarily care about how fun their gameplay is. But, as I was saying... There are many questions that it raises, which is one, how she's going to fight, and two, if... So not all of these grave birth statues are actually animate enemies. Let's just keep using our projectiles, then. The lighting is very, very dynamic. It gets very dark very quickly under here. But as I was saying, that if... Okay, grave bird armor and that... Stone armor with a tinge of green, one of a set of armor pieces cast in the image of the grave bird. Grave birds are ancient golems created to guard the spirit graves built where all, where all manners of death ultimately drift. And I wonder if... <sighs> the raptor's black feathers explicitly say that they increase the damage of jump attacks. And in context, the assassins wear them to look like death birds, which... The grave birds are golems so that they're based on. Presumably. But... Because we fought the Grave Birds and the, I mean, the Death Birds and the Death Right Birds in the base game. And there is actually, I believe, a single Death Right Bird in the Land of Shadow that drops a pretty good Weapon Skill Ash of War. I forget what, ex what it's called. It's, it's called Ghostwind Call, and what it is specifically is an equipable version of Ghostwind Ignition. Which is a- oh my- what? What? What in the- oh my goodness. I- what the hell? Really? Okay, heal. I- what? Why are the dogs so strong? Glad I survived that. Okay, I- we need to put some buffs on if we want to fight these guys. That's actually ridiculous. I- anytime I fight more than one enemy at once, I need to buff. I can't afford to try to be silly about any of this. And range of that actually is kind of garbo. But the big thing is, is that if Chaska does end up being on standard banners, people expect. I find it pretty interesting, actually. Given that Animo not on characters or Animo Tribe not on characters, and it would be really funny if Chaska was Animo Vision but not Animo Tribe. Well, it. That's generally the hardest thing in most Souls games in general. Even if you have decent AoE, just because... You don't get Mercy Invincibility in this game almost any of the time. Which means that in a lot of other games, a lot of the issues with group fights is, end up mitigated by just... Okay, they hit you or knock you down, and you can't take more damage for a little while, which makes things less of a problem. But if you... If they can just keep on hitting you, which can oftentimes sometimes prevent you from entering Mercy of Invincibility states, even if there are ones, you know, hit you so you don't fall down, maybe. And that makes it real, real tough. But either way, that jail is what comes to mind, but then after that, it's belly a rat over here, and then presumably across the bridge over around the way to Castle Ensis, but there's also this entire area which is more or less off the map. There is at least one dungeon in there. Another one over there in this sort of river chasm area. What really interests me is that I haven't found, and I've just taken note of that, I haven't found any of those Ash of War scarabs, which were pretty common back in the normal lands between. But, as I was saying, it's interesting to think that presumably maybe the most useful, depending on whether... Pyro story and Pyro Nolan characters' abilities also give flight, or if it's just limited to Animo, or maybe if it's just limited to Pyro, or if Pyro has a better version because Fiorina has both Usia and Numa on the shortest cooldown palatable, and they even have entirely separate cooldowns. 
And both of them are on her normal attack, which means six seconds per. And they have separate cooldowns, so you can alternate if you have to. The big thing is... Back when they had the funny spinning top gravity enemy in Spiral Abyss, sometimes I would use Fiorina just to disable it in conjunction with Nuviet to make it easier to fight. But I think I actually want to level up that great katana now. Should have a decent amount of things to do it with, but the big question is... Do I want to make stance breaks easier or do I want to keep damage negation? Because I want to switch this out for the deflecting hard here, which basically gives you secular style deflections, which is really, really cool. A lot of people do really, really fun boss runs with that, but I'm going to need to buy a few more normal smithing stones before that. Got a lot of ancient dragon ones. Let's just see. Offer a bell bearing, and that's Corin's. Corrin's bell bearing is right there and he sells all these incantations, but I think this one disappears when you go to New Game Plus. The ones that stay are Glovewort and Miners and some of the other connected ones. Let's get 12 of these. Decently cheap. And maybe 12 of these. That's 12 per type in total. But as I was saying, given that Furina has the best Usia. And Numa both, arguably. The fact that... Oh, Nahida has by, and fa by far the best. Dendro application. And given that... Because Numusia was Fontaine's gimmick, Night Soul is... Not Lons, and... I guess you could argue, argue that Dendro element itself was kind of... Samaru's gimmick, and I would agree. As it was presented pretty similar to how they're presenting Night Soul now. Even though they didn't really do anything like that with Numa. At least not as much. So let's make this weapon strong. It's pretty good. I want to see how much better it ends up being than Blood Hunsfanger if it even does. It might not. But it would make sense for Mavuika to be the best Night Soul user, quote-unquote, so to speak. In the same way that Furina was the best Numusia user, and... Well, I should make this good, too. Oh, it's got Blind Spot equipped on it. Interesting, okay. It's a good Ash of War, but I wouldn't be able to deflect all that well with it. That's got 687. That has... Oh, a bit less. Mm -hmm. But it... And this even has better guard boost. I... It's cool and I'd like to try using it. I think that quality might make it a bit better, but we'll have to see. Let's go to Belly Rat Jail real quick. I wonder who's in there. Belly Rat Jail. So some people are thinking that she might allow non not long characters to make use of Night Soul mechanics, maybe. So the end is Demi Human Swordmaster owns huh, weak to slashing and fire. Hmm. Maybe I could try actually using flame art on him. Maybe. It's an idea. Given that well we'll see. People are thinking that Shibalanke is going to basically be 5-star Benefit, Bennett, and Mwika might be 5-star Zhongling, basically. <clears throat> but something I do find really funny is, like I said, and maybe I should mention this to more people so they actually give a verdict, but I think there's a pretty decent chance that... Let me just see real quick. Bell your rat jail. Other enemies are... Webbing Jars, Shadow Undead, Mesmer Foot Soldiers. Oh, Jar Innards. Huh. It's in the jar. This should be weak to slashing. Maybe holy? Probably not. Ooh, almost dropped the controller off the desk. But as I was saying, generally speaking, most 
reliable weeks saying that Shibalage is going to end up being a medium slash short male character. And what I would find exceptionally amusing is if that was true only because Shibalage was literally the Traveler. So in total that's 39. 739 AR at base. It's kind of crazy. Let's try this out and just see. This is a has an overhead stance on it. Already equipped. Actually, and this one actually kind of sucks. Let's see what. Uh, red stance, normal attack, or a strong attack over series. And it's kind of like the Ichimonji from Sekiro, but it's just not good. Yeah, it it wouldn't surprise me all that much, but I'd be kind of sad. But that's basically Ichimoji triple. So what's on here at base? It might just be okay, but we can use Revered Spirit Ash Blessing. Now that takes. Now it starts taking two. Let's check these Ashes of War and that. Take that off. Do the enhancement. Yeah, it's just overhead stance at base. Okay. Huh. So I'm wondering what I might actually... Well, Lion's Claw is always good. Hmm, that's... Right now it's... Let's make sure it's in two hands so I can accurately check. It is in two hands so I can compare the AR. So it makes this the strongest. Lion's Claw on that. And... This Claw there. Standard is... That's 610, not bad. No, 620. It's a little bit better. 632. That's worse. And that. Hmm. Standard heavy. 132. 620. And that. Six six four, which is decent enough. I'll try it. Just for fun. This is basically just for fun right now. The nice thing is that I can put Lion's Claw on it. I hear something here. Huh. But eventually deflecting hard here is what- Oh, hello. It's good enough. And it's got a big swing to it. It's a very cool looking weapon, even if Bloodhound Swing is probably a bit better, strictly speaking. Hello, hello. Frozen Maggot. Frozen Maggots that somehow continue to wriggle, mainly found in jails. The maggots develop in great jar innards or an invaluable source of sustenance to the prisoners. So we can't break these right now, at least not like this. So we're going to find an enemy in here that's basically just... A person who has been crammed into one of those jars. Rather unpleasant. So, oh, and yeah, we got dropped down. There we are, okay. Some of these, I think, should be elevators. Hi there. Oh, yep, so they're horn sent undead. Kind of helm splitter attack, and... Oh, right, because we don't have overhead stance right now. But overhead stance is an interesting one, but it doesn't actually deal all that much damage, is the thing. All right. Hello there. How much will the critical do? It's a slash of critical. Come on. Oh, another silver horn tender. It... I want to try this on the boss at the end in conjunction deflecting hard tier. But I just don't know. So eventually I think there's going to be another part that drops me down. We'll see. Which more damage is this going to do? Oh, come on. Oh, and I forgot to level up too, that's right. It's actually not all that... Okay, 922 versus... Let me just see. Not that one. This one. Will this open now? Okay, that won't open at all, ever, presumably. It's this. More frozen maggots. Pretty sure that'd be for some sort of hefty frost pot. Okay, those aren't icicles, those are stalactites of a sort. And, okay, we can drop down into there... 
I wonder when that'll be around, so to speak. Hi there, hello. Get up. Get up. It does deal about... Oh... A little less damage. You are... It's a good thing we have a decent amount of Shadow Tree Blessing, but still... Good amount of negation. To drop down into here. Big question is when... I end up getting into... Jail, jail, jail. Later areas. I know that there are going to be some illusory walls eventually, but there aren't that many in the DLC. There weren't even that many in the base game compared to other Souls games. Which is... Okay, that's just somebody's... For a second I thought someone had invaded me without giving me any kind of notification. That would have been rather unpleasant. But as I was saying, I think even if this is technically worse than Bloodhound's Fang in a number of ways, I would like to use as many new things as possible during my time through the DLC. So I think I'll use this as my Bloodhound's, op Bloodhound's alternative, especially since I think it is... Just see. Got a bit of a delay, but this is... It's a bit faster. It's not all that much faster, but it's noticeable. Please, not the jar or anything but that. <laughs> Promise I won't ever do it again? <laughs> Excuse me. I swear a living saint I'll surely be. Okay, please, you must forgive me. Forgive me, please. I... I don't want to say what I'm thinking, but I think you're probably thinking it too. Okay. Let's cut this guy down. Okay, and that's a thrusting running attack. That's a slashing running attack. And we even managed to get both. Very clearly, to get down there, I'm going to have to drop down. On top of those jars to platform my way down. That makes sense, but... First, I'm going to see what's in this side room over here. Feels a little... Something is going to show up, and I don't know what. Oh, jar innards. Uh-oh. That's tragic. Luckily, very weak to slashing damage because they are literally just flesh. Ouch. Shadow Realm Room 3. The soldiers who joined the crusade were rewarded with grace of plenty. Y you don't have to stop yourself. I stopped myself. That's a rule I set for myself, not for you. Just be smart about it. Be prudent. So, dropping down rather than jumping might be a better way. Try backstepping or... Ah, uh, okay, so that's nice. Aha, uh -huh, okay. That's a good way to get a nice evenly sized jump. Oh, okay, yeah, I would hate that. Thank you. This is a glass shard. Okay, so to, I could get down there, but get the impression that what I should do is like a treasure chest. <sighs> to get up top. Get up top over there. Zoomably. Backing up as best as I can. And will that do it? It did. There is a room we can get on. Can go over here, there, and oh, we got living jars. How much damage will you? Mm -hmm. Not all that much. Makes sense. You're there. Guess we could use this hammer. Given that, how much damage would standard cult crusher do? I would like to use something else, but it's just by far my best blunt damage option. I hate it here. What, what do you mean in context? The fact that the Italian backed off, or inner meat? Scraps of flesh refilling great jars, rancorous spirits cling to the pinkish red twitching meat. There are enemies to inflict damage. So what becomes the condemned gets sliced up and stuffed into jars to become saints instead. Well, that's sad. Let's put my stuff back on. It 
I've heard that a lot of people... A lot of people are resorting to Hatsune Miku. That might work for you, but I'm not sure. Okay, so we got another big jar, and this is another hefty cracked pot. Okay. Who, me or the Italian? Or both? I... Part of it for me is just... Thank you, thank you. I appreciate you too. You... I like everyone. But you have a very different feel. It makes our conversations... It gives it an interesting balance. I think everyone's better off when we get a wide range of viewpoints in here. Well, you know, eventually you will. You'll hear enough stories about unfortunate conditions and unfortunate injuries. Uh, frankly, I think you might be. You might know a bit about that already. Yeah, yeah. Eventually, eventually. Don't worry about it. But as I was saying, a lot of it is just, I'm in a house with other people. I can't afford to be too loud. You know, as much as I hate to say it, very human. Ooh, oh, that was tough. Meat, meat. Meat attack? Meat attack. Okay. Me when meat attack. There we go. Let's go for the totally unnecessary critical. It. Two handed jumping attacks are just very, very good in this game. Hmm. Main thing is, this cave has gone on for a while and I haven't found a single, single elevator. So what I'm wondering is, how am I gonna... Is the boss just gonna be past here and I'm going to need to fight it after consuming a decent amount of vials? I mean, flasks. What are these guys are weak to backstabs? They are! They're human enough. Human enough. Okay, charge that heavy and go for another, sw another swing. One thing about this is... Alright, if you have to hop out, don't worry about it. That's normal. But as I was saying... There's another... Actually, let me see real quick. Bloodfiend's arm. Who is that? Bloodfiend's arm... Oh, it is in Gravesite Plain. There's another big bludgeoning weapon. That's really, really good, especially for inflicting bleed. That I would like to use. And okay, cool. Hello. Charge. Dodge. Oh, come on. Thanks. And just go for the critical just for fun. You know, I feel like I should move to Italy and become a politician. Just, uh, oh, human bone shards in there too? Oh, unpleasant. Pass some kind of bill that just gives people in Italy better Wi-Fi. So that you can watch things better? Maybe. Come on. Oh, so that didn't break it. Come on. Okay. So sometimes that works. Okay. Alright. Hmm. Slam. Okay. Dodge that. Slam. Hmm. Some again. Okay. That... That might have pushed me off the bridge. That would suck. Yeah. I could be... No, what what party would I run for? You know, where where would I fit into Italian politics? Weird controversial internet streamer party. Okay. I feel like I feel like I would be able to convince Alessandra Mussolini to finally condemn her grandfather and go back to making weird city pop in Japan. Frosty or Chatterino? Are those... Oh, are those better chat interfaces for Twitch? I... I'm glad you know so much. It's really convenient, thank you. Understandable. I, okay. So my question is... Would that be... Better for... Maybe something like putting... Something like cap chat into... Stream mobs or something? Because that's what I kind of wonder. And oh, okay. So these ones have higher poise, understandably, but... They're actually not doing that much damage. I... 
I appreciate it. It's really nice. Claw Sashes of War. Guess it's time for more Lion's Claw. Maybe. But, as I was saying... I definitely should... Okay, so that Crouch Attack is a poke. Should definitely get back on the Minecraft server soon. I think it'd be good to bring... Maybe you and maybe some other people onto it too, if at all possible. Again, just because we need more people playing. Probably. Yo, know, it's... The theoretical server limit is 20, and we never get more than three at a time, so... Fair. Well, again, it's... As long as the information is useful eventually. Elden Ring required a head. So that... We might be underground, we might not have a map, but we can still mark this with a marker. Uh, there was a sort of a lamp. A pile. Okay, frozen maggot. What do they just call me? A frozen maggot? Well... This chat is literally full of nerdy know-it-alls. It... It's everyone here. Well, maybe. One... Two... And, yeah, we can go for the back. wonder if that did more or less damage than it otherwise would have. Okay, so does this link around to the part before, or... Wait. Interesting. Greater Potentate's cookbook in that. Hefty Freezing Pot, right, so we did get it here with all the maggots. Hefty Freezing, yes, it uses maggots. And no special lore in the description, but you can see maggots on top. How pretty. Fair. You know, there, there's a game studio called Insomniac. I actually... I don't really remember what they make. I don't even know if it's good or not. Well, okay. That's where that potentate's cookbook is. So if we... Oh, all right. I, okay. Huh. All right. Well, they don't do as much damage as I would have expected. Hmm. But... There, there's been some discourse that I've seen about just the way that Night Soul mechanics are being done in Not One. And for, for better or worse, it, it seems that the sort of middle of the road approach that they're taking is kind of satisfying nobody. Because on one hand, they're deliberately attempting to make sure that they don't power creep too much exploration wise because they're really good in Not One, but a lot more stamina is consumed by their abilities outside of Not One. Which decreases pull value for the long term in theory, but also means that missing them isn't life or death. But it's also just... It's the sort of necessary evil of making a live service game. That the only re long term reward you can really continually promise is just... In this case, more currency to get more characters eventually. So we got another hefty craft pot, so there was just a bunch in here. Got two in here already. But it's also just sort of... They're really, really good. And in particular, say... If you have Milani and you've got Fuel, you can just surf on water forever at high speed. If you've got Kinich and you've got Fuel, or technically it's full Gistin. Found... Oh, nice, nice. A J-chat. Okay. But... You know, you know Jion and Kachina... Kinich, the only reason they can make them... Oh! Oh! For OBS? Oh. That's nice. Well, the big thing is, is... Eventually, I would like to... Take advantage of Streamlabs' ability to also stream on YouTube. In addition to Twitch multi-streaming capabilities. But I do appreciate that. I'll definitely... I'll, I might try that soon. Because I've got some assets in the pipeline being made. Um, I don't think I'll start on YouTube until I've got that. There's one big thing about YouTube is that you need to make thumbnails for a stream, which is a small but meaningful, small but meaningful hurdle. And it, I do tend to stay very consistent to what I've planned and said I've done. But until I've got a good portrait, a good, you know, good art assets to use, you know, I want to make something that's not going to look stupid, you know? 
It's not like I can be relatively proud of. As hubristic as that sounds. My question is, did I miss any spots? There's a lot over here, and what I'm wondering is, are there any other items? Because there are more pots, but I can't see anything up top there. It doesn't really look like it. But yes, we all we all appreciate everything you've done for us. We're all very proud of you. I would say that nobody would get mad if you dipped out for a bit to install the new thing, but you did say that it would take probably forever, so... I guess you can, you know, make your decision, but, you know, no pressure one way or the other. Okay, so until we get Blood Fiend's arm, we're just going to use Giant's Crusher. That's fine. Anything I need to actually hit with bludgeoning is, I mean, strike is not going to take a lot of rolling to get past anyway. This is around where we were, I think. Oh, hello! Hi! Okay, and, oh, well, alright. It's just Lion's Claw. And they actually get staggered. Goodbye. And that's... Okay, so we can get more raw meat dumplings from that, which is nice. It's pretty decent. Okay. But Kinich draws a lot of comparisons to Spider-Man specifically. You know, a lot of the new Spider-Man games, especially Spider -Man games, especially mine, because of the fact that you can just perpetually keep swinging in midair. If you've got fuel points, which is really, really cool. Oh, oh. I guess both of us thought it was referring to us. Classic narcissism. And slash again. Oh my, ooh, goodness. I could try some lights on maybe. Oh my goodness, that is tough. That's fair. But, well, the thing about it is that anything... Any browser source I could use in OBS, I could just use in Streamlabs, because Streamlabs is, in the end, just a fork of OBS with some added features and more monetization on both ends. The big question is really just... Whether it would work with getting input from both YouTube and Twitch via... Oh, so they just jumped the gap. Streamlabs existing framework. So Golden Vow is just kind of close, but not all that far, and given that I literally have this thing at max upgrade- What the No! Yeah. It blocked my jump! That was one of the most ridiculous deaths I've had in a while. I hate my stupid Chungus Lane. And the best thing is, no shortcuts. Awesome. And well, we've got a decent amount of runorks at least, but still. Alright, alright. I would say it might honestly be a good idea to equip a rune arc or some I mean sacrificial twig or something. Yeah, it would probably be a good idea to equip sacrificial twig just so that if I end up falling and dying, I don't end up losing all of my runes. That's the important thing, right? You have to see me die. It's just all of those. Okay, so that stain is broken. So what you're saying is that I was the sacrificial victim. That my death led to your connection working again. If it... If it... If it works, it's worth it. If it works that way, it's worth it. Okay. To go over here. Avoid all the funny guts. There we go. It, epic Italian internet moment, I guess. Good slashing. Good slashing. Might just be the running attack having a higher motion value, but... Hmm... Seems to be doing a bit more damage. There we go! Blood Sacrifice! You gotta love it, I guess. Not really. But, what is interesting is that I was wondering how they would sort of incorporate Sacrifice as a theme in Notlon without being incredibly insensitive. And I wonder if they would just sidestep it entirely, but... What's interesting enough is that, you know, they don't talk about human sacrifice, understandably, but one of the three sort of philosophy books for Notlan is Kindling, which is a sort of fire elemental associated version of a sacrifice sort of deal. So they did try to find a way to get it in, which is interesting. A lot of stuff related to that is data mineable. 
It's not stuff like Honey Impact, so you can get a look at it if you want. Okay. Well, it... There's a big difference between sort of heroic self-sacrifice, the type you get in a standard Western story, and just Aztec-style human sacrifice, as in take a dagger, rip out the guy's heart. And it... And I don't want to be all, you gotta hand it to the Aztecs, because under no circumstances do you need to hand it to the Aztecs. It, it, you know, it's very much a sort of two wrongs don't make a right situation there. But, wait, what? Okay, come on. How did... I got every single bit of that? But... A big misconception that people tend to have about... Aztec human sacrifice is that it was all just... You know, putting children in... Tombs and... Oh, just... Ripping people's hearts out with a knife and drinking the blood, yada yada, you know. Indiana Jones, Temple of Doom type stuff is that... Generally speaking, Aztec blood sacrifice was not that. It was a self-sacrifice. And very specifically, it was... Generally, it was people piercing themselves with cactus spines to draw blood. You know, if the Aztecs were still around today... That might be... They, they might have been the ones who invented, honestly. I don't know. I mean, apparently, there are a lot of goth Hispanics, so maybe it's truer than you think. Okay. Oh, come on. Oh, what? We got grabbed? That was a grab attack? Oh, wait. Oh, that just pulls you in. It doesn't damage you. Maybe I just got out early. You can do some grab escapes. But as I was saying... Yep, and that's just broken, broken. Can't actually technically make that jump if you're really lucky and smart about it, but... It... Maybe... Maybe I just need to put you all down, like... Just... Farm animals or something. I don't know. I, I don't know which one of us is going crazy. Okay, there we are. Let's just... Okay, thank you. One, two... Three, uh, oh my goodness. Not fun. Come on up. Oh, oh, come on, please. Jump, tech, and... Ah, oh, come on. What? Jump. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay. How did that not hit me? Okay. But basically, it was a matter of self bottling under the understanding that... And this is going to sound really metal. And I don't really like using the term metal a lot. But there's really no way to describe it other than that's metal. Aztecs believed that the sun was basically powered by blood. That the sun took fuel and that fuel was blood. And basically that if the blood sacrifices didn't keep up, and I guess you can argue about how much of it was political. Well, Aztec metal is an extant thing. The band Sepultura, and I need to actually listen to it sometime, did an album called, named Roots, which was basically just a conceptual album about, okay, what if the Aztecs made metal? And they used a lot of traditional instruments and used a lot of Aztec-related themes, and it got a lot of really, really good reviews. And it's, you know, you can always just say, oh yeah, it's one of those things I mean to listen to and then just never do it, but it very much is something I mean to listen to eventually. But as I was saying... They believed the sun was powered by blood. And that every now and then, sometimes, if you didn't give the sun enough blood, the sun would die, and the sun would have to get replaced by someone else sacrificing themselves entirely, someone of sufficient power, basically, to become the new sun. Okay. Fair enough. Have fun. And another thing about the Aztecs, which you may or may not know is that they had a lot of religious significance to obsidian metal. And in fact, they used it for a lot of divination. And the British occultist John Dee had a scrying glass that he stated had been basically given to him by angels, but 
whether he knew it or not, whether it was deliberate deception or not, it was literally just something that the British had looted from the Spaniards, which they had looted from Aztecs. Okay, so is this an elevator or soft hidden path? Oh, is that where the boss is? This? So where is this going to take me? But part of that significance is shown by the fact that a number of Aztec gods have names that literally mean obsidian. The big one is Tezcatlipoca, who name translates to literally smoking mirror, which is just... It was their name for obsidian, just their little description, descriptor of, of obsidian. But a number of other, three other gods were known as... And it was sort of a cardinal direction type thing too, and they were known as other Tezcatlipocas. I think Quetzalcoatl was a yellow Tezcatlipoca, if I recall correctly. And Shipe Totec was... Which literally means the flayed god, which also, again, metal. Was, I believe, the red Tezcatlipoca. But it had incredible religious significance for them. So that over there, and I think Barrier of Gold would work well here too. Alright. Try this out. If we're going for a Saints Big Strategy, Roll Knight's Resolve might actually be better. Hello, and thanks. I do dodge, dodge, dodge. I dodge, dodge. Ooh. Dodge, and thanks. Ooh, dodge. Oh, I. I oh, alright. Hmm. I don't like this at all. Oh my goodness. I. This is an interesting idea. But I'm not exactly sure that this weapon is all that well suited for the fight. Oh, but there's a Stake America here. Okay. Let's try this out. Hmm. Honest to goodness. I'm probably better using Black Flame's protection anyway. Oh well. Very, very few things I actually would want specifically. Because it's got some magic damage on its sword, but it's not the only damage I have. It's not as if I'm running into a boss that just breathes magic at me. Okay. Let's try this again. Might have to try going for a Lion Squad, but we'll see. And dodge. I dodge. 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 Dodge! Do dodge, dodge. Oh, thanks. Ooh, very good. Guard break. Dodge. Oh, I ah, didn't think that would... Thanks, thanks. Ooh. What? All right. It's fun, but it's so fast. D dodge and... Dodge. Oh, you... Got out of the way. That boosts my guard counters pretty decently. There we are. Dodge. Oh, that missed? Huh? So agile. Dodge. Uh, dodge. Wow, it. Maybe Lion's Call would be better here. It's tough. I, thanks. Oh, uh, what? I thought my poise would be better. Dodge. And, well, alright. Thanks. Uh, just slash, but. Want to go for those second row deflects. Thanks. Oh. Alright. That's fun. Uh, did not mean that. Okay, we gotta make sure we... Thanks! Alright. Oh, what? Oh, are you kidding? Okay. Oh, what? Okay. Oh, dodge. Dodge. Heal. Some of these buffs are gone. Dodge. 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 And uh, What? 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 Okay, heal. I, maybe I should just try to hop out. Or just spam Lion's Claw on you. That's probably right. What? What? No, no. Okay. Didn't know he had Frostbite like that, though. Okay. Okay, nice. Yeah, this, as fun as the deflections are, this is just so much better of a strategy. I hate it. Hate to see it. Okay. Cool. Die. Alright, cool. It... 
As cool as Deflecting Harger is, I'd need to use it on enemies who are a lot more telegraphed. Or at least learn the patterns better first. Hmm. Jeremy Human Swordsman Yosh. Josh? Last night, we, last night we got the Yosh speak. Owens, a master swordsman who devoted himself to the Starline Sword, realized that only ruin awaited the end of the procession of stars and imprisoned himself in order to forestall it. The Starline Sword was going to come from another demi human enemy later. However, Yosh, an apprentice who absorbed his techniques, summarily refused to heed his master's words. He spent his entire life at his side in defiance of his self imposed seclusion. That's cute. There's nothing past here. This was just the boss fight. So my question is, is there only off to the side? Would I be able to get back out? I just... The deflects were so cool. At least conceptually. Lion's Claw just being the better way to do it makes me very sad. But, I guess I'll have to run back through the dungeon. Okay. In order to drop down down those jars, which it seems like I'll have to do. We have enough for a couple more levels. Let's do that. What would be good? Endurance is always good. Get more equip load. Then, let's take strength. It's good on a lot of things. It normally, well, I guess this is honestly around... Well, it's more like 150 that you're recommended to go into the DLC, but I never even did any grinding. It's just what I did was play the game thoroughly. Anytime I saw anything that was meaningfully hostile, I went out of my way to kill it. You know, I've ground for items specifically. Well, I guess you could argue that in, the ca in that case I did kind of grind in that. I ground for foul feet to make into gold pickled foul feet, which you can use to get more runes when you kill an enemy. Which, I use it on bosses to just, you know, get more runes. And I've had this talisman, which boosts my rune acquisition on from basically the very start of the game, since my second play session. But it... I have not specifically ground. To the extent I have this strength, it's because I've sacrificed other things, such as, you know, having a fourth talisman slot, basically. Since Golden Scarab is always equipped there in order to just get more runes and buff myself up in other ways. That said, on some boss fights I strayed from the path just to get a little bit of extra strength. There is a boss fight in this game against two enemies that are strong enough on their own. It's called the Godskin Duo. You fight the Godskin Apostle, who is this skinny guy, and the Godskin Noble, who is a not-so-skinny guy. And they fight you both at once, and when you kill one, the other respawns after long enough, which makes them pretty infamous, because if you don't have good DPS, they can just screw you. Most strategies to deal with them have to do with using the sleep status element. They're some of the few boss enemies in the entire game that can actually be meaningfully put to sleep, because most bosses are totally immune. Some of them, some of them, can be briefly stunned by affecting them to sleep. The godskins are the only enemies of note. In terms of difficulty, that can just be... What in the goddamn? Really? Come on. I hate this stupid place. Okay. Well, it's time to put on a... Oh, we're still medium low because we got a bit more endurance, but we need the sack twig on, twig on, I guess. But just... I barely failed at lining myself up on that pot, and it just killed me. Okay. You got one rune arc, that's... The platforming in here is rather silly, but I think this is kind of the worst of it. I hope. Who knows? But... Basically, what I was trying to do there in that boss fight was... There's this Flask of Wondrous Physic, which is basically a custom potion you can make by putting two of these Physic Tears in it, two Crystal Tears in it, and get two, or sometimes there are a couple effects with two Tears so you can combine them and get a stronger version of that one effect, such as two Tears that individually restore half your health in order to have a Physic Flask that restores all your health, or the same for mana. Or there's one that's funny that basically lets you do a Minecraft Creeper Explosion 
and you can use two of those to make a stronger Minecraft Creeper explosion. It's silly. And really not all that good. But you can try it. But as I was saying, the big thing is that the damage doesn't scale on anything. It deals holy damage, but not holy damage that scales. Which means that... <sighs> the only way to boost it is skills, spells, various kinds of buffs from various sources like talismans that just increase holy damage specifically. I don't believe you're getting any more out of it by boosting your faith, and it's this thing right here. The two ruptured, tier, ruptured crystal tears I have. And it, you can go do some meme builds on it, basically. Especially with a weapon from the DLC. You can use it to basically propel yourself towards enemies and then blow yourself up. It's only useful for PvP meme builds, where the goal is to kill the other guy at the same time as killing yourself. But you can get some pretty funny memes off of it. But... As I was saying, it's not that great, and... What?! Huh?! The back step put me too far? Oh, you're kidding. Whatever. But as I was saying... Well, the... we actually managed to use the twig for something. Okay. Oh, but technically I don't need... I didn't even need that because... I actually got my rune stain back. Whatever. But. Yeah, the one I had equipped, which I got from one of the furnace golems at the start of the DLC, is one that if you time your block, not a parry, but a block, to be just before the enemy attack connects, you take no physical damage and greatly reduce elemental damage, and it powers up your next guard counter, which is, after you block, if you press the strong attack button, you do a special... Slightly slower attack that deals a lot of stance damage, which basically can turn into a knockdown on an enemy for a critical attack. A lot of additional stance damage and additional damage as well. And you can use that for some very, very strong builds. But it did not work all that well on that Demi-Human Swordsmaster because I had never fought him before, so I didn't know his moveset. And also, it was just really, really fast. It works really well when enemies do one big attack or just a predictable string, but when they go for a bunch and you don't know how many that bunch is going to be, well, you're kind of screwed. But the big thing is that it makes the fight pretty similar to Sekiro, actually. Because the mechanics are taken, I wouldn't say right from Sekiro, but they're very similar to the deflection mechanics from Sekiro, which I would say is probably the best from software. From soft action RPG. Though frankly it's a lot more of just a sword action game than an action RPG. It's the one with a preset playable character, no meaningful customization other than a couple outfits they added as token options in the one free DLC update. And they're fun little outfits, but they're not really crazy. But as I was saying, that should do it and wait, what? Oh! You just can't backstep there at all. <laughs> no matter what, the backstep throws you off the edge of the one below, so you just have to drop down. Okay. I hate this. But as I was saying, a lot of that game has to do with deflection. The big mechanic of the game is deflecting enemy attacks by timing a block. You know, because in Souls games, from the very start, from Demon Souls actually, there were parries you could do, which, with a very strict timing window, would totally open an enemy up and allow you to get a very nice critical attack on them while they were just totally still, which would also just give you breathing room against other enemies, too. Because it would put you in an invincible grab animation of sorts where both of you were stuck. But, but... Let me see. And there were frozen magnets on the ground, and frozen magnets that they dropped themselves. How nice. But, as I was saying, there were a number of things that people thought were sort of weird about Sekiro. And one of them is just that it only had a small free DLC update instead of anything substantial paid or otherwise, or substantial and paid. And very specifically, there is a long-running fan conjecture. I don't like saying the word theory. It's kind of inaccurate. 
and I'm a stickler for that kind of thing. But long-running fan conjecture that the boss Millennia, the sort of super boss of base game Elden Ring, generally considered to be the hardest boss in the game, was intended to be, quote-unquote, or at least in part, sort of recycled from concepts for a backstory character named Tomoe from Sekiro. And that a lot of her attacks are somewhat similar to attacks from Sekiro that are associated with Tomoe. And just, you know, very tall, scary swordswoman with a katana. She winds up with some of the things we know. And another big thing is just... Her attacks are very relentless, and one in particular is... Very, very hard to dodge. Almost impossible, and only if you do... A lot of silly garbage to make it work. A lot of people think that Millennia was originally meant to be fought with secular mechanics, and that's part of the reason why she's so annoying that the game is just not suited for the way her fight works. Which, you know, said so we will. Oh, that's right, I can't use this without a rune arc anyway. That's right, that's why it was never working. Okay, cool. One. Two, three. We got some more of you. Thank you. Alright, so no Rinark up because we would lose it if we died. I don't want to lose it if at all possible. I have control over that. Okay, so. Slash and. Okay, cool. Slash. Let's get that going. Thanks. And critical. Hitting them while they're still curling out of the jaw is a good way to do it. But as I was saying... The big infamous attack that Millennia has is the Waterfall Dance, which you might have heard of, which is just... A series of three massive AoE spins around herself that... In addition to being really hard to dodge, do a lot of damage very quickly. Can't actually block it with a shield. Which is arguably kind of the intended way to do it. If you don't know the trick, just actually use a damn shield. But... The one thing about that is that if she hits you with any of her attacks, even if you actually block them, she heals pretty significantly. And if you don't out-DPS her, she can quickly heal herself back up to full health. It's rather annoying. It's part of what makes the fight hard. So that broke your pot. Okay. Interesting, and... Oh, come on. Come on. Let's let your tendril come out. Thank you, and slash. We do it again. Slash. Slash. Okay. Actually, let me see. That second one is always... A thrust. Interesting. You don't have the right. Presumably, the way we get back up there is by... Jumping up some of the pots we saw before. Could this be it? This does not seem to be it. I wouldn't think so. Because there was that other little area off to the side. This is tough. Well, there will passage around the other giant jars that I did not really go to before. But this... Oh. Oh, no, this was a giant jar. Oh, I did not... Okay. Fair enough. And a big one at that, too. Okay, cool. So my question is... Could I get up top on one of these using this? Does not appear to be the case. Main thing is, that part that we couldn't get to because of stairs fell out from under us so long ago... I'm wondering if I'll be able to reach it from... What little drop down we have over here, or whether we'll need to try some other means. Who knows? One, two, three. Okay. Jump, slash. It's actually a bit like the Ichimonji from Sekiro, actually. Do okay, well, alright. Thanks. Slash, slash again. And can't get criticals on them, but you can just stun them a bit for some follow-ups and a little bit of additional damage. That's fun. This down here seems to be the one I need to drop down. Hello there. 
I know that you can jump over. Please jump over. So I don't have to chase you. Come on. Get over here. Thanks. There we go. Nice. And how did that miss? How did that miss? Okay, whatever. Slash. It. I am very glad we got good armor. Good negation. The big thing is that the game very much is not balanced around. The DLC is not balanced around me having the stats I have because it is supposed to be a bit overtuned, but you're supposed to compensate that by getting the Shadow Tree blessings. The little shards you can pick up, the Shadow Tree fragments, which you can use to get more. I don't know. More damage negation, more damage yourself. To bypass the fact that the enemies are, in theory, a bit stronger. Not in theory, they just are a bit stronger. Oh, come on. But. I do have end game stuff from Elden Ring. I'm overleveled for Elden Ring base game end game because I. Oh, can I not actually get a backstab on that one? Maybe. I don't know. Because they are human annoyed enough that I can get a backstab when I sneak up on them, but. Who knows? Okay, human bone sharp. This seems to be the way down. Seek down and short whiff dead. Oh, so it takes you up to where that platform is. Okay, cool. So there we are. So that's how we need to do it. Probably getting another hammer on here. That don't want me to drop down? That might... That... Ha. Huh. This is interesting. This is on a cycle that automatically goes up and down. Or so it seems. I guess this is just a platform to drop down to to call it, maybe? Come on. Maybe if I jump onto here. Yeah, if that makes it come up, we have to hop off first, so it doesn't... If it's an auto-cycle, it's an auto-cycle when it hits the top. Okay. Let's just jump here and some kind of switch. What does this do? Huh. Oh, presumably it pulls the lift up. And now I kind of see. I really don't want to use... Is this? It's not a lift. Hmm. So then. Visions of victory in short well done. What is that lead to? Is that another item or... Pots that drop down... Oh, uh, this just loops around. There's a way to get back there. You did it! Hooray! Okay. So just so I don't have to repeat all that garbage another time. Just in case, let's put a couple of buffs on. Thank you. Fizz buff, usually good. Well, all negations increase and then a fizz buff increase. Thank you. That breaks that really easily. Not for a second the pot would work as armor, but I guess it's just as camouflage. I guess that makes sense. Very clearly, that big pot is alive, so let's get this going. Come on, come on. I... Thanks. Oh, I did... I thought that would actually... Let me... Guard counter, but no, it dealt too much poise damage for me to go through. This is going to be another hefty crack pot. Oh, the great jar. So there was a jar that I could wear on my head. This is a great jar I wear on my head. Increases the power of throne pots of all sizes. A great jar which fits comfortably over the head when upturned. Tire the shamans who perform their worship at jails. They offer their prayers to the innards of the great jar such that, may, that they might be reborn one day into sainthood. This is the cycle of death and rebirth taken to the hands of mortal men. It sounds a little sacrilegious to me, but what do I know? Who knows? So, any other jars around here or... Can't get lock on on much of anything, so. Not here. Still seem as if. And I can teleport out now. It'd be nice if this took me up into Bellurat, but it does not seem to be the case. It's funny that it's just under Bellurat. Well, alright. Let's see how I can drop down into here. Thank you. Keep on dropping down, and this just leads me back to where I was, so. Took on the boss, got that funny jar. We can just escape this place. 
And I suppose that the next thing to do would be to go to Belly Ramp proper. Yeah. It's a painting over here, but I believe that leads to Endure Olean. It's a picture of Endure Olean, so that means it might not actually be obtainable until I actually reveal Endure Olean by burning away the thorns around here, which... Is this where it is? Is this the ceiling church? It's up there, and I should be relatively close by in theory. Maybe it's here. There's another boss I need to fight eventually to actually get rid of these black thorns that surround this tower, which is going to be the final area. It's some necessary story progression. But there aren't a lot of actually mandatory bosses in the DLC, which is interesting. So let's get this back on here. Yeah, I guess it's going to be Lion's Claw. And I had so many hopes for deflecting hard here, but I'm just not good enough. Oh well. It's, it can be cool for challenge runs, but yep, and a bunch of golden seeds, which I am not making use of. Let's check our key items. It's going to be an info, or there's a map that shows might be a bunch of Nicholas crosses. Talismans, it might be in key items. Let's just see. Key items. There's a lot of maps are in info, but hmm, it's not. Spirit Grave Spell Tower lies to northwest, so yeah, that would have to be in your lean. Bellarat Tower Settlement, right, because it's around the tower. So would it be an info? Just see. Place Mirage Riddle. I print clue, Regier's letter. Cross map right, because this is DLC separated. Do we have to buy a horn scent? Nicholas Footprints, so. Should be one around Belly Rat and one also by Shadow Keep. So we're at this one right here. Okay. Assumably it's going to be on the other side of this here. Just see what's there. Fun enough, but I am running out of rune arcs now, which is less than pleasant. Given how much I rely on them for buffs. Well, how much I rely on their buffs. But the rune gain from stuff around here is actually a bit less than end game in base Elden Ring. Though to be fair, base Elden Ring's end game. Well, especially including the extra bosses are actually tuned for new game plus more than actual standard new game, which is frankly an incredibly baffling decision. Because the main thing is that arguably, and it's mostly talking about Melania, and the other enemies in the Halo Tree, which is her dungeon, and Mikko is and the Consecrated Snowfield, which is the world area that leads up to the Halo Tree. But even still, it's just sort of... The game should not punish you for knowing where to go places or investigating. Because it's sort of... They do that presumably under the impression that, oh, you're not going to know to get to the Halo Tree on your first playthrough. You're not going to go there playthrough one, so therefore it should be balanced around New Game Plus. Which... And the funny thing is, is that Millennia still is marginally stronger on New Game Plus. It's just not nearly as drastic a difference as between other enemies, normal or more normal enemies, between New Game Standard and then a second playthrough with the same file. So in the end, it's a sort of a presumption that it's balanced around New Game Plus, but if they didn't deliberately balance around New Game Plus, then they just made her ridiculously strong for no reason and maybe decided that... That was sort of the limit for anything anywhere, really. That no matter the cycle, they couldn't make anything meaningfully more different than Millennia. It's not impossible, but it's a bit silly. But this actually seems to have a bit more range than Bloodhound's Fang, actually. Let me just check. That. Let me see. Wait. Switch that out. And it 
It's got slightly longer range, and I think the hitbox works a bit better due to it not having the curve at the end. And not having to deal with the curve sort of going the wrong way around the enemy and stopping short. Maybe. I'm not sure. But either way, it's a new weapon, and I'd like to use new weapons as much as possible. It... This is probably one of the better weapons I can actually put Lion's Claw on. There are curved great swords, but there aren't a lot of amazing ones. I do have Omen Cleaver, and I could level that up if I wanted and see what its AR is at. But also, it's just... It's just a big katana. It's hard to get that much cooler than that. So, in that case... We're going to way up to Belliorat, but once we get close... Eventually, we're going to get invaded by Fire Knight Quelin, which means that I should be prepared to switch to Buddy Hewis. I think it's Buddy Elis because it's French, apparently, or so I was told. In order to How'd they see me? I hate that. Stupid birds. Okay. Because it's the best anti-humanoid enemy type weapon, period. Okay. Let's actually put my Starlight back on. The only sorcery I ever use, ever. So... Keep on moving. Let's see how this works. So Bellurat's run there. Seems to be closed, but my question is just... When I get there, will I be able to open it straight? Or am I going to have to find a lever, or use a key, or... Oh, but there are more people here. Hello. Hello. Now there's Shadow Tree Fragment. Can I get... An upgrade, or... So late is here, and I believe that's more. I can't get my Shadow Room blessing yet. It still only takes two, but still. Main gate cross. Okay. Here we do. Here we go. We did find that Mikolas cross. Hi there. Together, together we were. Together. Mm -hmm. For Mikola the kind. Many things. So he has a bunch of, basically, pet insects who find things for him. Ooh, okay, you know what? Let's take that. Note, Sealed Spirit Springs. Note, find by the Forager Brood. Available to paying customers. Blood fiends in pools of blood with meaty petals. And the fiends admire blood's beauty. Hmm. Well, pickled turtle neck. A large boost to stamina recovery speed. Next to the Forager Brood's pickle the lights are enhanced by the fermentation or rotting of the ingredients. But this results in a pungent odor, some kind of fun come to find... Fun to kind? Come to find the aroma irresistible. So these are just better versions of... The basic dried livers and pickled turtle mix. Well pickled and it's pickled rather than dried. That's all they got. Oh, we can talk to them. Oh, they bought something. For you, Lady so he's actually very, very nice, but... In the end, we can't meaningfully befriend him. He's too gullible. Okay, so he just says that again and again. Goodbye, and... Then get cross since we haven't talked to... No, this is Ansbach! I love this guy. Ben and he were a part of the flesh of my body. The first one we found was the first of the flesh of his body. Hello. Toward Moog. This cool old man is a lot of people's favorite character. My fighting day is, uh, far it's interesting that his weapon does not have a blood. Aspect to it, just, it's just a side. Mm -hmm. He is brainwashed by Mikola, though, as are we all here. Technically me too, presumably. Sure. So investigation. Ah, and there's also a secret cross we'll have to find. They are akin to tender Nicholas footprints. What he's left behind. Which mark what he's left behind. Some things that he should not have to. Alright. I presume you too are keen to know just what kind Mikola is doing here. And that's from the trailer. That line. Any more crosses. Be certain to tell me. I presume you too are keen to know. Just what okay. 
A lot of the reason a lot of people like him is that he's just incredibly chill. That Moog is one of the two mandatory bosses you have to kill to get in the DLC. It's Moog and Radon. Radon has other reasons. Plot relevant reasons that you need to kill him. But for Moog, it's... Technically, that is true, too, but... Part of it is also just that he guards Mikola's cocoon and you need to touch Mikola's corpse in order to get inside here. Though, in theory, you know, it'd be really fun if he could just waltz up there mid-boss fight and go into the Land of Shadow without killing him. That would be really funny. Especially since there's another Moog fight in the sewers in the mainlands between under Landell Golden Capital, the sort of third of the way, half of the way, two-thirds of the way dungeon, depending on when you get to it. That leads down here, among other things. But there's an illusion version of Moog that doesn't have a second phase to the fight. Basically, it's just... Basically, you fight the first phase of the fight. But it's not him, it's an illusion, which is part of why even after you kill the real Moog, the illusion still shows up. Because it was presumably made by his brother Morgoth, or someone, I guess. But as I was saying... When you fight him there in the depths, there's the Erdtree's favor plus one, which is the sort of medium level upgrade between the basic one, which is just has no number to it, and the plus two, which I currently have equipped. So is Quillen going to invade here? And we can just open this. How nice. Belly Rat Tower Settlement. Honest to goodness. Much as I hate to say it, I should just be using Lion's Claw on this thing. And that plateau over there, yep, this is the plateau, which you can never, ever reach legitimately. It's rounded bit in the middle, feels like it could be an arena or something, but no, it's just nothing. But as I was saying... It's in a treasure chest behind him, but you can literally just waltz up and pick it up mid-boss fight. Especially since opening treasure chests puts you in... In animation with temporary invincibility. Black Pyrefly. Okay, let's use this. So, so much as jumping notifies them, but... Blasting them does not for some reason. It's pretty funny. It's a good way to get a bunch of... The Eagles from range. The big thing is that the four pickled foul feet that they occasionally drop... Allow me to craft those gold pickled foul feet that allow me to just boost my rune of acquisition when I kill an enemy. Should you chance upon a sealed spirit spring while there are stacked stones nearby, by toppling them you may break the seal. I... This is me just talking about things I like to talk about. Say what you will, but... My dream game, if I could play something, and therefore probably if I could make something, would be an MMO Souls-like. Or, I guess, an MMO with action RPG with heavy Souls-like influences. And one of, one of the things I like about Souls is that, even though there's a lot of PvP and it's a damn good PvP, the focus in the game is ultimately deliberately upon, oh, and they all just fall off. Hate it here. On cooperation. That over time, and a lot of people have complained about this, and I do kind of agree sometimes, that they might have gone a little too far in sort of de-emphasizing PvP instead of PvE. It doesn't change the fact that it's deliberate and meant to align with what the devs actually want people to really do with multiplayer in the games. But you're going to hate me for saying this, but I feel like... It'd be the kind of thing I'd want to make, or at least make a sort of first draft of in Roblox, actually. Because the big thing is that something relying very heavily on multiplayer. And for it to be an MMO, you would not be able to just run it peer-to-peer. -peer. You would need someone to host a server. And unless you have a company backing you, that is an incredibly tall order. I... Hello, Scorpion. I get the impression that... Okay, come on. These guys should be weak to strike. Oh, incredibly weak to strike. Nice! Okay. Good damage. 
I was going to say, maybe Lion Squad, but they're very easy to stand sprint. I don't need to worry about that. So, now you're at Tower Settlement. Get a bit more Spirit Ash. What is crawling around on the floor? Oh, okay, more Scorpions. Oh, oh, there. Hi. Reminds me of all the little spiders from... Oh, Nightmare of Mensis in... Bloodborne, which... Bloodborne emulation is getting really, really good. Really, really good. Well, it's getting usable and kind of playable. That's what my definition of really good is here. Yeah, but... In one of the late game areas in Bloodborne... Okay, two of them, right, because we get more as time goes on. So that you can catch up to earlier levels faster, as well as... Make sure that your progress is somewhat controlled and regimented. Because that's... You know, you need more Spirit Ashes or Shadow Tree Fragments to upgrade your... Shadow Tree Blessing or Spirit Tree Ash... Spirit Ash Blessing per level, but also you just... Get more when you pick them up as the DLC progress goes on, so... It is what it is. But as I was saying... Oh, that's... Looks very yellow. That actually reminds me of Velatria. That's fun. Yeah, these guys are easy to stance break. Nice. But... <sighs> Fireproof dried liver. Not even a pickled one. Okay. Not nice. Let's crush. But as I was saying, a good way to make sure that I could test out multiplayer and get multiplayer running would be to put on Roblox. And, you know, I don't... I don't like Roblox leadership. And, and there's a lot they do that's very sussy. And most of them, a lot of the money they make is basically from just constant copyright infringement that they turn a blind eye to. Is the entire reason, a big reason the Roblox system exists is so that player developers can make games based almost entirely on copyright infringement on existing IP without Roblox themselves being able to be sued if things really go south. It, especially because of the way the Digital Millennium Copyright Act works, that though a lot of patent troll lawyers are trying to change things to make it so that back in college I actually had to do sort of a stock analysis of Roblox as a company. And I was actually wrong. I thought they would get in more trouble eventually than they did for all the sus stuff they get up to, including just the copyright stuff, among other worse stuff. But So this counts as a dungeon. Yeah, exactly. Among other things, it's a platform, not a game itself. Which is... Okay, this is not open from the side. Classic dungeon. This... It's kind of on the tier of Shaded Castle, or Castle more than probably. Not really a legacy dungeon. It's shrewd business, but it does bother me a bit. Especially since a lot of those copyright infringement games end up being really, really good. Shuttle Run Blessing. Weird Spirit Ash. Okay. It, there was a Pikmin game. And that's exactly it, that, you know, IP infringing games can put lots and lots of microtransactions inside and Roblox themselves can't get in trouble because you didn't buy copyright infringing product, you bought Roblox and then it's the devs problem. That also does not open from this side, okay? The main thing for me is, like I said, And I think some of it has to do with the fact that the way that Roblox works encourages the IP, these IP infringing games instead of making games that play the same with original IP. As it's, it's a race to the bottom kind of situation that if the IP protections were better or worse, and I say this as someone who isn't particularly fond of IP law in general, but ideas want to be free and all that. But that yeah dodging is better than deflecting in almost every case oh and what are you what is this guy some kind of i think these are potentates but 
These are all sort of undead religious horn scent. But there was a really good Pikmin game that I played that was basically you play as either an individual Pikmin and team up with others or trying to kill monsters and grab treasures or you'd play... I thought this would be poisonous, but it's not. That's nice. Play as a monster and try to eat Pikmin. And it was really, really cool. But eventually it got taken down for IP reasons. And all I could think of was... You know, it sucks that it went down, but what sucks even more is just... It had to be a Pikmin game to succeed. Part of that is, again, the reason they made it is because they were Pikmin fans. But also it's just... If game makers could not sort of pull off the gamble of using existing IP to get faster clicks, they would have made something that was sort of Pikmin with the serial numbers filed off enough that... IP infringement stuff wouldn't get them, and then it could stay. But the shape of the platform means that you can't really succeed doing anything else. But... I wonder if you can even go over here at all. You have the impression that the areas down with the houses are the areas you're limited to right now. But as I was saying, giant... Time for seeing some... Oh, this looks like the weird trees from Dark Souls 2. But another thing that I really don't like about Roblox is if, and I've seen people play it, and it seems interesting. I might try it out a couple times, but the design, de the design decisions made to me are just fundamentally perverse. And I do mean perverse. Which, if you're talking about the idea of sort of Souls-influenced MMO built on Roblox, the obvious answer is Deep Woken who's... The people who made it also made a game called Rogal, Rogal Lineage, which is actually more of a ripoff of Rogal Legacy than it is of Souls, but they also rip off Souls too. They were going for the gold medal. But... So where does this go? Oh, we got a well in here. Where does that lead? But as I was saying, you know, maybe I could come back here eventually. Oh, but this probably leads to... Hmm. One of those doors from before, maybe? I don't know. But, it's not crazy pay to win, but it's permadeath. And it's from people who take all the wrong lessons from Souls, arguably. Well, actually, if the point is monetization, which it almost certainly is, they probably took the right lessons. In the sense of... And a lot of it has to do with the way that the original Dark Souls was marketed in America. Marketed pretty much entirely on the idea of it being a hard game for... Hard game for real men, trademark. It... There is... A pretty infamous... Well... There's an advertisement that was used... Put out by Bandai Namco, presumably, when the first Dark Souls came out. Not grease, mixture of incendiary materials, short time, heavy fire damage, fire was a symbol of the crusade, and even Mesmer's rank and fire soldiers would wield it. That, basically, it was a picture of a bunch of armored knights in a hospital ward, with shields fighting one of the bell gargoyles from, from the first Dark Souls. And all of them were just sword and board build, and you had a... Oh, what? What is that? Who is shooting incantations at me? That's scary. Oh, maybe that one? I... Oh, it's you! Okay. There it is. Doesn't deal that much damage, at least. That's good. Hmm. That spiral one, I don't think that's one I can actually use myself. There are ones where I shoot arcs of light, but none where I shoot spirals, if I recall correctly. But... We can actually simulate that guy around a bit easily. But as I was saying, they had this old lady just cowering in fear as these, or at least sort of visibly perturbed, as these armor knights were waiting one at a time to take on this boss individually. And the impression it gives of the Soul series is comically inaccurate. Sword and board is not the only way to play the game. You can use co-op co-op. You are heavily encouraged by the game to use co-op. And, you know, for one, there's magic. A lot of, just a lot of ways to play the game that aren't 
you know, stereotypical sword and board knight. A lot of them that are literally in the game starting classes. But that combined with a very sort of unpleasantly antagonistic idea of what difficulty is and the purpose of difficulty ended up being how the game was initially advertised. And this was... That was Bond... Small private altar. Oh, that's cute. That was Bondi Namco's doing, not from software's doing. So this is... Ooh, got those warriors over there. I think I might want to go back to that well first. Given the way that side of grace is working. Thank you. Oh, but... Very clearly... I can jump on top of here and find it something. Hmm. Just don't want to rest at the side of grace until I absolutely have to, given that it'll respawn everything in here. And this... Oh, it's locked! Awesome. I'd love to see it. Not really. But, tying into that, just the idea of... And especially just the huge focus on PvP. That is not what the devs like. Not what the devs intended, or at least not what Miyazaki, the director, intended. And I think... It's very easy to get very great man theory about game studios. And it... It is objectively undeniable that... The first Dark Souls was largely Miyazaki's brainchild. Well, the first Demon Souls... The first Demon Souls was Miyazaki's brainchild. That... What's really, really funny is that... Specifically, Demon Souls was originally conceptualized. Sony basically told From Software, make us a game to compete with Oblivion. And they ended up making Demon Souls a game so unlike Oblivion, it's hard to know where to start. And in the process, they basically invented a new gaming subgenre. If that isn't the definition of task failed successfully, I don't know what is. But the main thing is. One thing Miyazaki constantly says in interviews is that at the point of the multiplayer, he wanted a focus on the cooperative elements. You know, invasions are fun, but as time has gone on, invaders have been increasingly sort of underprivileged deliberately in comparison to cooperative players summoned help, because invaders are supposed to most of the time basically be additional obstacles, smarter, more adaptable obstacles that players are nevertheless meant to overcome. And nowhere is that more true in Elden Ring, which, for better or worse, I would say that I don't exactly like it. You can only be invaded if you actively have cooperative help in your world, unless you use the Tauntor's Tongue, which is an item that you have to use specifically to just open yourself up for PvP if you want a duel. And some people do do that, but the only people who do that are going to be, kind of, frankly, PvP nuts. Which means that, and to be fair, I think... I gained a few years in Purgatory with, with with what I did in earlier Souls games, which is being very predatory in PvP and praying, literally praying on people who didn't really know what they were doing, using lots of toxic weapons. Yeah, literally toxic weapons. Because toxic in earlier Souls games was just super poison. I used a dagger that inflicted super poison and just let them gradually whittle themselves down and die. And it was also the weapon in the game with the highest singular critical damage multiplier, which applies to backstabs and parries, which meant that basically I would hit them with the dagger, and even if... Oh, we've got these severed arms, which are just like grafting. Because the grafting is basically the same as the pop grafting that Godric does, and Stormvilt in the base game is very similar to... Oh, this is locked too? Oh, that's ridiculous. Whatever. Mark that differently, because it's underground, I guess. But, very similar to the pots of people that the horn scent make. But, as I was saying, I would stab them with the toxic dagger, which even if they blocked it, they'd still get toxic inflicted on them. And if, once it procced, I would let them slowly die. And if they tried to heal... I would just get behind them while they were healing and do a really high damage backstab. And that really, really opened them up, and it was vile. Additionally, the area where a lot of PvP took place in Dark Souls 1, 
which was known as Uasil Township, which was a DLC area with a lot of leg room before the actual boss fight, which is part of why people like to do it there. A lot of cool places to invade, a lot of... a sort of rectangular arena type area before the bonfire. This... Let's actually Lion Squad this guy. I, oh, okay. And, wait, what? You are actually ridiculous. Oh, wow. This? Okay. Oh, but probably they'd be better off having piercing damage dealt to them anyway. So too high up, dead, and ahead. Can't get through there right now. The sword the Horde Warriors drop is actually really, really good. Well, it's got an interesting attack. When I was going through the main game, I waited until the DLC came out to do my playthrough on stream. When I was doing a couple invasions, I ran to some people using DLC weapons, and the sword that the Horde Warriors drop is ridiculous for PvP because it gives you crazy sort of swing your sword around and basically manifests this big horn of wind on the sword that hits really, really far. Going to the Horde Warriors, Keepers of the Tower made from a thick metal. The one time I actually got a kill with this stupid build, it was by distracting their the other guy's summoned help while another guy actually invaded. And the summoned help, who was hilariously overleveled, was using that weapon. And it was rather intimidating. But as I was saying, the big thing with Deep Woken is that, much like Rogue Lineage, it's permadeath. Very PvP-focused, which, among other things, is a cheap tactic for lazy devs, because it means you don't have to code enemies. And a lot of progress through the game is gated past PvP kills, so it's openly adversarial. Your enjoyment is directly dependent on preventing other people from enjoying the game. And it... I think it's the only thing that a dev could do. I guess it's kind of like how League does things. The only thing a dev could do to make a game toxic on purpose and short of just literally making League of Legends. Hit a few of them from behind. That won't work. Okay. Got one of them at least. But... Because a lot of the time, to get to the sort of prestige classes of the game, you just... You need to kill other players. And if they don't want to pay for a res, which is crazy levels of pay to win, they're just SOL and they need to start all over. Which is just wild. And it certainly makes them money. But it's not the kind of thing that I can endorse in any meaningful sense. It's very, very scummy game design, especially, at least to me. So who and where? Hello. Jump attack is great. And this strategy with... There is a weapon art, well, a combat art, as they're called, in Sekiro, known as Ichimonji. Which just means straight line, which is very, very similar to just this. You can also do it on the ground. Storeroom key. That storeroom on the second floor of Bellurat. They spiral engraving. I don't really see that. Maybe it's on the top loop, second floor, tower settlement. Go and find that, presumably. But it's going to look back. Is this a door or... Let's see. Come on. Thanks. Come on. I would hope this leads somewhere notable. It does not look like it. Oh, well. What's this? Three throwing daggers, whatever. Okay. But I really like the idea of a MMO Souls-like, and I think that if done right, using PvP as a focus can be a good way to cover up lazy dev tactics, not wanting to actually program AI. But I would not say that a good way to do it is to make a game where you have to kill other players and just send them back to square one permanently. It's a very progression-oriented game, but the only way for you to progress is to destroy completely and utterly other players' progression. And that's just ridiculous. But as I was saying, 
I think there's a decent way to make something like that, even the PvP focus, as long as it doesn't force you to just ruin other players' days just to get things going. So the locked part on the other side is kind of a red herring because it doesn't even... You don't even push it open, it's just... A lever you pull, but we've gotten back to the side of grace, which is good. So my question is... Is this the storeroom? I wouldn't say it is. Maybe. Good thing we haven't rested. Yep, and right doesn't open from this side. One idea... And I'd thought about it for a while, but... One of my guys, his birthday was a few weeks ago, and hung out over the weekend, and one thing we did... While we were waiting for one of the other guys to get off of work bartending was... Played Smash Brothers in a really, really funny, unique way. Where we'd play it on stamina mode, and one player would have 300 HP, if I recall correctly, and the others would have much, much lower amounts, something like 50. And all of the players with lower HP would be on a team, and it was sort of a 3v1 raid boss encounter. And there were lots of ways to kind of cheese it, in particular Ness, on the player side, made it stupid, because you could just stun lock them with P PK fire, especially if you get two of them. Let's get on the other side, and sometimes that was done. It was a scummy tactic, but it was funny too. But basically, the idea of finding ways to make players into boss encounters for other players, presumably groups that would co-op, and if done right, that would be really, really cool. And I think one thing that comes to mind for me with that would be sort of really rare, deliberately overpowered sort of legendary weapons that you had to log into and sort of have on you, or at least you had to log in with a certain amount of times, or you would just lose possession of it, and someone else would be able to like land to it by finding it in the world, or defeating a boss, or something like that. But in exchange, it would make you stupidly strong, and the idea was just it would make you basically a raid boss. And that player factions or players in general would want to take you down in groups that someone could get access to it. And it... The risk would be worth the reward. And it wouldn't send you back to square one to lose it. You, know, you would lose it, but you could just as easily get it back, presumably by killing the other guy with your group. And it would... By making them strong enough that you would really want a group of players to take them down, that doesn't just encourage PvP, and hope, though hopefully not toxic PvP, but cooperation. But who knows, and again, it would take a lot of effort and time that I probably won't have soon. Crude shortbow, fashioned with sickly bone, being for spirit calling, and a product of the ancient hexing arts of the tower. It's unique steel rancor shot, and view arrows with vengeful spirits before firing off a barrage. Viewed arrows chase down foes as they cut through the air. Let's say it deals any kind of magic. Hmm. So down here, don't know if I'd be able to get up there now. Got some of this. This drops out into a side passage. But another thing would also be... Oh, oh, okay. In order to encourage players to not sort of just stay in one place and just sort of bully lower strength, lower level players, because I guess you could incorporate, though it would take some tuning. And these are ones who turned into flies, okay. You know, blessing of the Urchu would in theory be the most efficient healing we have. But as I was saying, the best way to manage, you could do something that makes it so that players have their damage scaled against other players based on level, but at the very same time, I would say that would kind of discourage, in theory, you know, a theoretical game here, discourage leveling a lot of the time. It would encourage players to stay weak, and I actually kind of dislike that, as... the way that... Because... Elden Ring and other Souls games have level-based matchmaking. What are you abandoned here? 
carved words coalesce, abandoned here my arm sinistral, that is his left arm in a very Latin way. But since there's level based matchmaking, you are encouraged to sort of keep your level low if you want to engage in PvP in a real and meaningful sense. And that's just the way they do things. But I think especially if the game was to be monetized in some sort of live service type way, you know, some sort of subscription, maybe just, maybe a subscription model just to play, who knows. Raises attack power when summon spirit dies. Dried bouquet, a quaint bouquet of dried flowers off into a small grave. Raises attack power when a spirit you have summoned dies. The sorrow that flows from the undauntly demise of a loved one is a tenor shared by all regardless of birthplace. Well, I don't use spirit ashes or summon help, so, all right. Uh, but, can I get around back here? And if so, well, there's nothing. Hmm. Big thing is, I'm gonna have to go down here now. That's fine. This might link back to a spot I've been before, but we got a lot of funny flies. Hello, fly. So what then? I don't see anyone I can lock onto at the moment. Hello, fly. Oh, come on. But I think some way, and I think some way to do it, would be maybe a scaling factor based on sort of new game cycles. Though to be fair, that would be, that would take a lot of math and a lot of balance testing. But another way to do that, which could be fun, would be just... New Game Plus would require maybe going back to base level. Some level of character recreation to an extent. At least leveling down. I think you could probably keep some amount of equipment. In exchange for, well... Because that is a big part of the appeal of a new game plus in games like these. Especially since a lot of replay value comes from the fact that unless you go in new game plus, you generally can't get every boss weapon on every character. I think we've been through here. Yeah, yeah, we have been through here. That was the one I killed its friend. That was the one I couldn't hit through the brain. But... You know, because, for example, when you kill Millennia in this one, you can either get Scarlet Aeonia, which is a spell that lets you do some funny shenanigans. Just, oh, okay, poison. Not fun. Funny shenanigans inflicting a lot of Scarlet Rot on an enemy, which is this game's version of Super Poison. Or you can make a really strong Katana. And to be fair, th given that there are a lot of bosses in this game... They did also add these Remembrance Duplication Muslims in the base game. Plus, duplication rem Remembrance Duplication Coffins in the DLC that allow you to... Second. Oh, I did duplicate them, but you can only duplicate... You can only get each weapon once. And this game also has dual wielding, which is a feature that they took kind of from Dark Souls 2. Which means that if you want to have two Hands of Melania, which is the name of a katana and use them for dual wielding, you've got to go through the game more times. So that, even if you duplicate one to get another, because you could duplicate one to just make another Hand of Millennia first thing is on New Game Plus, you still have to go into New Game Plus. There's no way around that. Extension boluses. Which way am I supposed to actually proceed? It doesn't seem like there's any obvious way out. Oh, right, there was that ladder. I'm stupid. I'm forgetful because I'm tired. But as I was saying... I think... And one idea I've had for a while was basically... A magic element system somewhat based on tarot cards. And... Maybe some level of... Either just completely locking you into the choices of magic element per file, or making it so that the only way you can get more magic elements is to sort of get another file or another New Game Plus playthrough going. So something like, for every base playthrough, you can get three magic elements, which includes sort of switching to related elements, getting another basic element, upgrading your basic element, etc. And then prestiging could maybe allow you to select new ones after keeping those, or maybe... And like I said, I would want to base it on the tarot, and this is why... 
Because one thing with tarot cards, and, you know, it's, again, it's not the kind of thing I take seriously. It's just, especially since, you know, the history of tarot is that it literally originated as literally just a playing card game. It was not something that was taken seriously as a form of occultism until people got really silly with it. But, okay, we need to run out of the way. That Horde Ward does not see me. Golden Bow. Well, flames protection. I do not want to die to that guy, and I bet piercing is going to be good against him. Okay. Let's just pierce. Pierce, and ooh, all right. Fun. And ooh, okay. Can I pierce? Oh, okay. All right. I, uh, dodge. I, okay. Huh. Need to heal badly. Dodge, and can I? Oh, come on. Dodge, and uh, okay. Thank you, we got you, and thanks. Okay. Those guys are crazy. Okay. Let's put some other stuff back on. But, as I was saying, one thing with tarot cards, with the sort of 20th century invented occultism related, is that every tarot card has an inversion, which is a connected or alternate meaning of the sort of divinatory meaning of the tarot card. And that could be an interesting way to handle prestiging, basically. You don't get a new magic element, so to speak. Or at least not an entirely new one for a sort of magic-based prestiging system. But you get to invert one of the magic elements you already have, and that could be real cool. Bestowed upon Inquisitors is an honor. Symbolic of size upper echo echelons. Smaller horns of a gold, boost amounts of rune, sold for a high price. It's a bit better than a foul foot. But much rarer and you do have to farm for them. Okay. So for example Though I guess it raises the question, okay, how would misfortune as an element work? Because the tarot card, the tower, symbolizes obstacles and misfortune. So that could be a sort of debuff-based element, maybe. And then... Sort of inverting the tower. Could you give you access, for example, to a way to easily clear debuffs, maybe. That could be an interesting way to make things work. But it... You know, for... Oh, so their incantation continued even after death. That's kind of metal. I need to stop calling things metal. But as I was saying, in order to... Oh, and there was another one. Luckily, we got lots of damage against them, because the Sacred Blade gives us bonus holy damage, which is good against undead, and also just gives us an anti-undead damage multiplier. But... I guess the question would be, you know, how would you make that work with weapons? You know, what could you do with weapons? That would be a way of... A sort of true difference, not just in degree, but in kind of power. That would encourage you to sort of throw most of your stuff away on starting a new game. To unlock a new kind of power you could not access otherwise. But... Hmm. This area is just so big. But over there, that's not the water. This leads back to that elevator over there. The end of this area is going to be, if I recall correctly, the Divine Beast Dancing Lion. Which is not a Divine Beast, it's... Well, they're Lion Dancers. So, that'll be fun, and it's... Weak to Fire, if I recall correctly. I don't think it's weak to Holy. Either way, that down there is something I missed beforehand, so... Go back down that way, and probably also, maybe... Try to... Oh, goodness. And that... What do I got there? It's like that? Wait. This is... Oh, this is something I just didn't see, was it? Oh, wait. Wait. No, I need to get there from the other side of top. But... Only thing I can really think of would be... Really, really weird exotic weapon types. And I mean real weird. Because one of the simplest ideas would be, okay, instead of katanas being their own base weapon type, or 
if katanas are their own base weapon type, maybe you have to upgrade them in a weapon proficiency system by... Oh. Getting your curved sword proficiency up really high and then sort of prestiging curved swords in the way that you prestige sort of a magic element to keep it longer. Maybe something like that. Well, Depsky. Okay, so that's another key right there. Iron grinning the bottom of the well in Belly Rat. Crude credit key. Iron grinning the bottom of the well in Belly Rat, the tower settlement. There are lots of keys in here. This is actually a very fun area. I like this. So, even with the hammer being a bit wider than Giant Crusher, we still can't have it equipped the same time as the headpiece without going over heavy load. That's kind of sad. I should get that, which is good. But the rest, over there is the question. This is nothing. Okay. So then we went over here originally, and this is all. This goes down to, I think, where we were before? Yeah, that's a small private altar. I think. That's right there, and this is... Aha! Uh -huh, I think this should be that door from before. All kinds of turnarounds. There we go, and is this... What is here? I... Ah, oh, that's the Horn Sent Grand Dam. Okay. This does open from this side, but what does that do? That did not really do much. Okay. Oh, pointless. Well, maybe. Yeah, I guess it was pointless. Maybe. If you went around here in a really weird way, maybe it needs it to kind of skip through things. I really don't know. Okay. Oh, we got Lion Dance costume. Fun. So this... Huh. Hello there. Hi. Who are thou, stranger? Mmm. Mesmer's peons. Mesmer has not peed on me. For persecution. Right, right, with the ceiling thorns. Thou camest, robbing us of all, spoiling all. Have ye not basked in these deeds long enough? You misunderstand me. Progeny of the wanton. They're talking about Merica. Thy sins thou shalt have thy recompense. The sacred beast shall unleash it. That's the boss of the area. All right. For what reason dost thou falter, villain? Enact thy sordid work with fullest pride. I'm not here to kill you. Tuck away thy tail and leave for good. Loaded with issue. Or oh, some issue. Goodness. Be gone. These lands were ours since times of old. Be gone. These lands were okay. This is, yeah, the Horn Scent Grandum. Okay. Horn Scent Grandma, basically. Put this back on. Keep on looking. I guess we could go down that well now. I suppose. See what's down there. It is a good thing that nothing has been allowed to respawn. Oh, okay. So it's back this way. No, back this way. I am getting all sorts of turned around. You can kind of see the thorns surrounding that tower. Right, okay. Question is where this will take me. <clears throat> but my idea is basically have your prestiging system to encourage replay value, resetting yourself. Ways to make players into basically raid bosses for other cooperating groups of players. That kind of thing. Ooh, and... Oh, this goes... Way out. Okay. 
and cannot... I cannot use my horse. That's kind of surprising. I would expect to use, be able to use Torrent here at least, but I guess it's like... Oh, goodness. Like Shaded Castle, then. Okay. Thanks. Very, very nice, though. This looks... This looks like hands. Don't like that. Hmm. So will this lead me around to a place I couldn't get to otherwise, or... Appears that this is kind of the edge of things, so... Luckily, the build-up is not that fast. So... Where to and how? Ah, so it just goes back around here, then. We... Huh. We can access this area. I was not expecting that. So in that case... I'm going to have to rest relatively soon to respawn things. I'm not looking forward to that. Hmm. So... Huh. Keep on looking. That does not lead to anything. I thought it might for a second. Looked like the kind of thing you'd be able to maybe slip through, but... Kind of glad it didn't, because if anything meaningful was hidden there, I would... Chances of missing it would hurt me a little. Slipping stone two, two of those. Okay, I guess. Hmm. My question is, can I get up here on top of this? Not like that. Hmm. How do I make this happen and work? Please, please. Okay. Hmm. Can I... Huh. Please, please. Can I get up here? Maybe. Seems like this might be a way up onto that. No, it's not. There's just nothing really there. I wonder if there are. I wish there was in Belly Rat anyway. Huh. And that... Oh, what do you know? Ulcerated Tree Spirit ends. We don't have any good way of dealing fire damage right now. That's true. Actually, I guess... Screw it. Balls of the wall. Let's make this happen. We... We're gonna have to buff up for this. Can afford to put this back on. Yep. Okay. Blessing of the Urgery. Golden Bow. Black Flames Protection. If I had Anvil Hammer, it would be good here. Alas. Hi, hello. We need to figure out a way to dodge. Oh, come on. That's... Hmm. Poison is as poison does. Can I... Dodge. Okay, cool. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, okay. Well, it... Interesting. You are not all that... Thanks, so Okay, cool. The poison is annoying, and clearly it seems to be a sickly green. Huh. Okay. And... Alright. Well, we didn't take all the much damage, though. That's nice. I Thanks. Dodge. Cool. We can neutralize ourselves after this is done. Come on, bleed already. Oh, come on. Do oh, no, 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 no. Okay, alright. Well, that actually didn't do that much damage. Okay, cool. Thanks. I dodge and can I Oh please. Okay, well whatever. To heal again and Oh what? Alright. Dumb. Dumb. Okay. Asher War. Asher War and There we are. Thank you. Finally. What did we get? Oh, immunizing horn charm plus two. It's pretty worth it actually, I'd say. Let's actually make a few more of those boluses, maybe. That's an idea. Neutralizing boluses, we got... We don't have as many dragonfly hands as I might like, though. Let's check that out, and that's... Vastly raises immunity, ceremonial accoutrement. Horns are sublime artifacts to horn scent, and their presence confirms the belief that they're a chosen people. Only the repeated sprouting of fresh horns can create a tangled horn, which is revealed as an irrefutable symbol of primacy. That is a better version of the immunizing horde chop I already had. It's got more of a red color to it now, too. Oh, and it's heavier as well. But this is... 
first of the ancestral followers, which suppose would imply that the ancestral followers have some connection to the horn scent, which makes sense, but still. Okay. Keep on going. Glad I took that thing down. Just I am happy to see rivers of blood get in use. It's nice that the poison buildup is slow, so I was able to actually just sit in the swamp without worrying too much. Smithing stone, poison bone dart, whatever. And nothing really here. Okay. And if only that would be cool. Oh well. This was all basically the arena for that big ulcerated tree spirit fight. It wasn't really a big fight, but for that ulcerated tree spirit fight. It... I feel like the poison is just for panache. You're not really getting poisoned here. Okay. So let's continue on our way. We got this up here, which leads to a tower. Probably up to end your Elim eventually. You know, we can just go in now. See what this is. Might be here. Answer is... Answer is... Nothing I see at the moment. Okay. Huh. I feel like this might change later and be more meaningful later. I really don't know. Right, let's get a bit more light up in here. But I... I'm running out of red flasks, is the thing. Find a way to open up another door. That was where I came from. It... I don't see any more flies, but I get the impression that there are going to be more flies soon. Okay, so take off the gloves rather than the helmet. You can still wear the helmet and the gloves give more benefit. I mean, the helmet gives more benefit in terms of defenses. So this... Nope, I can't get through there. Okay. Let's continue on our merry way. And, uh, uh, if I ran really, really... No, if I want to see what's on there, no doubt there's really much of anything I'm going to need to climb back up here. It, as cool as Giant Crusher is, its weight does get in the way sometimes, though to be fair, the levels I get from DLC will make that less of an issue eventually. But, let's see, oh, I... I can't really reach there, can I? Yeah, that's just inaccessible to begin with. Well, mm, yeah. It doesn't appear as if there are any items on there. Oh, we can get up here that way, but anything here or... No, nothing. This spot is also a big fat nothing. Making me so happy. So then we need to keep on moving. Yep, we got a few more flies, so... Is that gonna be an elevator that lets me in? What I do know is that if I get around here, I think it's this room specifically. It has the Euporia in it, eh? Very nice. Well, on DLC launch, it really sucked, but... There's this twin blade, as in a double bladed sword weapon type weapon called the Euporia. Not the Euphoria, the Euporia. It's different and important. That... It deals really, really good holy damage, but it's locked behind almost all the progress in the DLC. So it's very hard to really get and use with any meaningful amount of time. Okay. Come on. Slam. Die. Oh, I was not actually trying to go for critical. Well, whatever. Okay, alright. Thanks. Die. Okay. More fly mold. So, more, even more fly mold. So presumably that'll be for jar innards. That is what it says, after all. How much more? We got more flies. Okay. They fight very similar to fly enemies from Dark Souls 3's Every Andal DLC. Can I? Oh, come on. I didn't think... Oh, it entirely spins to me? It's actually kind of cool. Oh. I... Uh, Get up there successfully and take that fly out. Come on, come on. Die. Thank you. I... Oh, that camera is weird. Okay. 
Something in here. Serpent arrow, and that... What is that guy? Another one of those great horned warriors. But this... Here's a lot of stuff around here. Wow. Another Mikolas cross, and... How many shadow tree fragments? I do have enough for another level of blessing, actually. It's pretty nice. So, thank you. Die. Oh, and we got poison creep on the hammer. It's actually really cool. Two, three, and... Oh, come on. One, two, and... Oh, we're actually poisoned now. Not great. These are bolses at least. Okay. What is that guy over there? Don't presume it's an omen killer, but... Looks a bit like one. Huh. It's around to which side, and... What is this? There's an item. But... Just whitewash mushrooms, but... Yep, that's a dead end. You can't jump over that. As much as I like and respect the decision to not have an actual sort of free climb button, like in a lot of other, most other open world games these days, I'd say, it definitely allows them to do a lot more interesting things. The game is ultimately much better off for that constraint. So we got more flies, maybe. And then, of course, that guy over there doing god knows what. Hello, hello. Thanks. I oh my goodness. Can I? Slam, slam. Nice. Fun weapon. And its speed is actually rather good here. How am I going to get on top of there, though? That's my net. That's my new question. Take that guy down, and that's... Is that an omen killer, or... I can't even tell what that guy is. I... Hmm. I probably want to go with Stitcher. It's a very safe bet almost all the time. Put on a couple more buffs and take him out, just to see what he's like. But he does look awfully like... Probably one of those Great Horned Warriors, but they do look awfully like... Omen Slayers. Yeah, they got two of those. Hello. Oh, nice. Oh, what? Okay. Come on. Take that for increase. Resistance is at stance break. I okay. Thanks, and... Oh, you're not all that tough. Okay, cool. Thanks. Die. Okay. That was actually not all that bad. Horned Warrior's Sword, which presumably drops into that one. Curved Sword of the Horned Warriors, Keepers of the Tower. Ornamental Tangled Horns on the blade to serve as a medium for horn calling. If skull horn calling invokes tangled horns to cover the weapon's blade. Drive the weapon into the ground, calling a cluster of piercing thorns. Piercing. Horns, not thorns. Horns. Okay. Beast Liver. And then, put the hammer back on. Heavy load, yeah, yeah, yeah. What else is around here? One more. A few more flies. That, the poisoned hand. I knew there was a madness glove, but I didn't know there was a poison glove in DLC. That's really cool, actually. Poisoned hand. Gloves stitched together from the played skin, but I need to kill this fly first. Okay. Then I can take a look. Gloves stitched together from the flayed skin of the victims of Butcher's Bloodbath, it looks with deadly poison, raises attack power, and poison occurs in the vicinity. Forge of an unyielding black impulse towards revenge, foster those who have had everything burned or stolen from them. These are the weapons of the utterly downtrodden. Poison spear on strike, makes hand a step of a spear before unleashing a punching stab that penetrates the body of the enemy, it looks both with a large dose of deadly poison. Cool. Okay. So it's a two-hit kill either way, so... Stance break is nice when there are a bunch of them, but it's not really necessary when there aren't. Frankly, it probably kind of gets in the way. Okay. Reminds me a little Ringed City architecture, actually. Dark Souls 3 DLC. Okay. Mm -hmm. Keep on moving. And climb up here. See where this takes us. A ladder ahead? Well, it... Thank you, I guess. Okay. 
Ooh. So if we open this up, where will this take me? This is... Oh! Just back to the start over here. Okay. Huh. Out from the sewer, so... That's where that came from. Okay. So that... That's where we came from, and... This up there is something different, I think. This is where the Grandum was, and that... Well... Right, that was the well. What was this? We'll keep looking. Oh, just the pathway I didn't take initially. I... That was not the time to rest. I need to go back up here. But, Devon Beast Dancing Line should hopefully be soon. Hope we figure out where a set of grace is going to be. Because I am not in a condition to fight it right now. Could also level up my Shadow Tree Blessing. Put that into maybe Faith, maybe. Because leveling Faith would allow me to... Oh, boost the power of my seals if you can't. And Devon Beast Dancing Lion is going to be a very prime fodder for just killing it with Burn O Flame. So, can't afford to let that one slip. Go back down here and see what I missed initially. When I was going through and over this way, so... Yeah, just get back through here. It's back up there. Okay. We need... Apparently Quillen's supposed to invade somewhere in Belurat, and he hasn't done it yet. That kind of gives me the heebie-jeebies. Fun word. So... Went up here... Not go down here. We got these roofs to clamber around on, but other than that, who knows? That. Hmm. This seems notable. It was not notable. <laughs> it's back to that side of grace from before. To get in over there, we need to go back through this. Okay. Fine by me. And a. Little idol there. Okay. So this will take me down on the ground to something. It's more of those undead, so it's back to Great Katana. Oh well. Thanks. Oh, and what is Oh, you got incantations of the spiral. Awesome. I oh trying to do with a bit of tracking then. Okay, cool. Thanks. I I'm glad that didn't hit me. It's close enough that it probably should have, maybe. That leads around to- oh, the other part of Lower Belly of Rat. Okay. Hmm. I... It's interesting. Black Pyrefly. Thin Beast Bones. Hmm. Wonder if it's gonna be another Tree Spirit. I hope not, but it's not as if I don't have ways to take it down. It it would be really nice if there was a grace here. We have strong foe. Is that gonna be Quillen? Yeah. Or yeah, it's Quillen. Okay. Vades around here. Ah yep, it's Quillen. Fire Knight Quillen. Hello there. Oh well. Uh, what we have should be good. We'll just dodge out of the way and... Oh, well. Ooh, you're better at dodging than I expected. Thanks, and stab. Take you out, and... Ooh. You're strong. I don't like that. Dodge. Ooh. Oh. Need this. I... Thanks. Stab. You out of that. Thanks. Hmm. You gonna... Thanks. Stab. And no more of that for you. Just die. Die! Thank you. No healing. 
Speak for yourself. Crusade Insignia. Attack power for defeating an enemy. Talisman depicting a raised spear on a backdrop of flames and remembrance of the lives of lost in the Sacred Crusade led by Mesmer. It's a bit like the Winged Sword Insignia. I mean, it's angle and all. Uses attack power for defeating an enemy. The warriors who fought in the Crusade set aside with honor and mercy to wantonly impale and scorch those deemed impure. Those who felt invigorated by each cry of death were the same men who were certain of the sanctity of the campaign. All right. <laughs> That's not freaky. Horned Warrior Sword. <laughs> His unique greatsword infuses really well with fire damage. Though the actual Fire Knight's greatsword is probably a bit better. Silverhorn Tender, and yeah, we're running out of. Oh, no, we got. We got some of that back after killing him. Well, that's nice. Ooh, and this leads up to where and what. Oh, well, just. Ten arrows. Okay. So what I got for poking around. So how much farther? That's cruel and invisible wall. This is a cemetery for horns that killed in the crusade? It makes sense. Anything around here or this is I should wear Shriek of Sorrow. The occult divinity in the falling skill skill utilized by the drown downtrodden. Scream causing nearby enemies to flinch while also recalling deep state of resentment, resentment boosting attack rate based on the amount of HP remaining. Lower the HP, the greater the effect, and it snapshots basically the, the attack buff based on the amount of HP you have when you use it. Use it when your HP is low and then actually heal if you feel like it. Bit silly though. Okay, cool. And just lots of gold around seemingly. I think this is sort of a dead end. That is fine by me, though. Oh, yeah, because this up there doesn't have the amount of room to expand that that part did. Good amount of horn tenders. I wonder if they're all dropping it here specifically. But there can be farms. Probably better than Felfeet can, honestly. Maybe. At least takes fewer steps. Let's go back up. Hopefully, find a side of grace and that I can rest at without having to worry about backtracking. Because I'm pretty sure that all the doors that only open from one side have now been opened. Should be a straight shot to the end, basically, but the Grandum has her own plans, too. That is true. Her own plans, true. That is, too. Yeah. It's not a homophone, but... Just go up around here. Lead me to... That goes around up there eventually through a bunch of... Oh. Fights. Lots of flies. Just see that one more time. All those flies, but to get up to that top level... That's the real question. How is that going to be done? Seems like you should be able to get there, but that's a Shadow Tree Fragment that I otherwise would not have found. Yeah, if that just leads there, but my question is... Top level of that ring. Hmm. Well, we'll see. Come on, come on. Thank you, get me my Starlight back. Thanks. There we are, there we are. Try it like this. And... Hmm. I don't imagine that's nothing. You can clearly reach it, but the staircase is broken. Actually, yeah, the staircase is just gone. Thought it might not have been gone, then I realized, yeah, it's definitely gone. After first thinking, yeah, it's gone. So I was right the first time, and I shouldn't have second-guessed myself. Okay, yeah, Divine Beast Dancing Lion is weak to fire, specifically. Bruno Flame's good, eventually we'll get other fire damage stuff, but for now, I'll stick with it. Ooh. Get up there. Alright, go past where all the flies were, go up top. Cool. Climb up the ladder. And we're basically back where we were before after taking that detour to kill that tree spirit. Fun stuff. Hmm. 
up top here and there's no point in dropping down for seek ladder. I wonder if that would kill me. Presumably it would based on what they're saying. So let's see. Leads back to where those gray birds were. This is nothing. Okay. It goes back down to that little sewer-ish area. Well, I guess sort of just brown water. Who knows why it's dirty? That said, I probably don't want to know. Oh well. Maybe wait. Lots of those. Wow. Ooh, I didn't know you were there. Give me a golden horn tender eventually, please. That would be really nice. Thanks, potentate. And I... Oh, well, okay. Ah, and that stance broke too. Well, I... Okay. Oh, all right. I dodged. I, oh, I need to get out of the way before I get hit again. Otherwise, that would kill me. I, okay, cool. And slam it. What? I missed? Okay, whatever. Thanks. I, okay, die, die. Thanks. Die, die. Ooh, and we go through the spawn incantation. Right. Getting in the animation for the stance break. Okay. And you have some kind of buff of somebody. One of the potentates are involved. That might be. Really to that cleaver. Not a revered spirit ash, but I just... You're giving that so much more generously than... The shadow tree fragments, it feels like. Well, whatever. I think you actually do need all of them for... Maximum Shadow Tree Blessing too. Hmm. Interestingly enough. How am I going to get to the boss quickly? Where is that going to be? That I could drop down there. No reason to do that. And it would probably kill me. There's a minor chance that it would not kill me, but there's no reason to try dying to it. Yep, so this is up top here. Somber smithing stone. Okay. But presumably, actually, unless you did a glitch to skip it using Hand of Millennia for platforming, don't think... I think you have to kill the Divine Beast Dancing Blind, actually. Oh, and here's our Cursed Blade. Hello. Not great. Thanks, I... Thanks. Thanks, I... Thanks, and one more... Unless it miss, miss, and oh, please, please. What? Dodge, dodge, and heal, heal. Heal, heal. And oh, please. I, all right. Dodge, kick, and Lion's Claw. And Lion's Claw again. I, ah, stupid. I hate these curse blades so much. One of the most brutal enemies in the game. And this? Okay. This is a side of grace, and I think it's just right outside the fight. Well, that's awfully nice of them. That's actually really good timing. This will just be the last things we do before the fight. I mean, the last thing to do tonight. This is Redmayne Freya. Does she have... I think she might have special dialogue, but... Yeah, she has special dialogue if you summon her for the fight, so... I feel like doing it, sadly, even though I don't. Usually like that. Power the blessing, and there we go. We've empowered our blessing. That's good there. Let me just think. Hmm. Divine Beast. Beat. Beast Dancing Lion. That Pierce Fire Hemorrhage. To fire and to pierce. It. Well, Burn of Flame would be really good against it, so we're going to stick with that. Magic and Lightning Damage. So probably... Oh. Protection of the Urchery, maybe? I could see that working. It's only really bosses that deal multiple, so I don't need to ever really equip Protection of the Urchery, except when I'm fighting a boss. Not Lord's Aid, but... Protection of the Urgery, Affinity Damage Negation for Self and Allies, which is weirdly more than all of the other 
good ones that have higher net negation for that specific one. Let's see. My Shadow of the Urge Request Guide. Invocation. Wait uh, and we're in Oddsbach. Cliffside Terminus from the main gate cross. Kindred of Rot, southeast from Cliffside Terminus. Cliffside Terminus Grace. Oh, because the Forager Brute only shows up after you. Cliffside Terminus? Wait, did I miss a side of Grace? I think I did. Okay. All right then. Oh, but also we can get a level. Let's do that. Level up, and then faith. Okay. Hmm. Quillen, Horns at Grandin. Cross in Bellyarat, okay. From there, speak to Three Path Cross. South from there. Ha. Huh. More dies, Forger Brood will disappear. We'll invade you if you kill them. To brute cookbook, unaggressive. Thewear at Pillar Path. Okay. Freya. Okay. Oh, so. But south from here. You can talk to Ansbach now. Righteous tarnished. What brings you here? Tell you about the cross. Oh, and Verdig Reason Armor. Sir Moor. I'm in Stalwart. Provision. What weapon does he use? Forger Brood. We're basically non hostile kindred of Ra. Many virtues. I wonder if he's actually kindred himself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cross of the Tower. I've heard of Belyarat, as he's in Anirulim. Over there. He must be seeking entrance to the Tower of Shadow. Soon the Tower of Lights. Okay. Just see, apparently south of here is... Cliffside Terminus. Which I did not see. It's exciting, I guess. Hmm. <laughs> I wonder if Frey would be able to actually take advantage of a stance break if I made one happen. We'll see. This... Is this just something I haven't seen before, or...? Oh! Oh! It is! It's really something I haven't seen before. I... Did not know this was a place I could get to. That's crazy. It's crazy cool. One, two... Let's two-hand this. More dog. Or not. Okay. And won't tap the dog. Okay. This, I went around here, but I never saw this. Thank you, guide. Chris said Terminus. Skipping Stone 3. But, our goal should be kill that dragon real quick. Hello, bats. Oh, come on. I, that can actually use this pretty well. Can I? Oh, it can. I can't believe I never even tried using a jumping attack on a horse, and that, that almost killed me. Okay. <clears throat> Broken room this time. And where is the Forger Brood? Southeast from another side of Grace. This is rather interesting. So it leads over here. Uh huh. Alright. I like that. So I guess it's just a matter of seeing what I can do before going to Castle Ensis. And therefore before Shadow Keep. That's fun. Do as much as I can before all that happens. And I think Jagged Peak is actually connected enough that I'll be able to do that. Okay. Here we are, Cliffside Terminus. Well that was fun. I didn't know that was there. Just shows you always have to check every single little wall. <clears throat> I think those are blood veins. Clifford Terminus. Mark that, because that's where we're going to next. But first we 
The stage run. Belly Rat Tower Settlement. Small Prophet Altar. Belly Rat Jail. The stage run. Okay. Burn our flame back on. We'll summon Freya because I want that dialogue. Bonus interaction. We can't summon her inside at the end. Sad, but we'll actually make the fight harder, arguably, which is actually kind of nice. It'll give the enemy more health. So, head on there. Put the gloves back on. If I switch this out, would I? It's still a heavy load. Well, whatever. What if I took this off? Could I put on a different talisman? Uh-huh, yeah. Let's pull Drake plus two. <clears throat> okay. Touch that summon sign and summon Freya. Get this started. Just calm down a little. Okay. Oh, but blessing affects allies too. That's right. So we're all going to be that much stronger for the buffs. Let's open that up. Thank you. <clears throat> There's actually different dialogue if we kill the Grandum. Here we sagger her. For all that, get this going. Blessing. Golden Vow. Protection of the Earth Tree. And let's actually get this going. And you're healing. Okay, cutscene. That's just dudes in there. Sculpted keepers. Is it a golem or? There's dudes doing a line dance. Alright. Come on. Get on up. Get on up. Oh? It's got hair on its head. Mm. Alright. That's me, the Tarnish. Oh, but it's got a cool wooden interior. The wooden sound that bites. Wow. Well, see who takes Akron. Should be good here. Divine Beast Dancing Lion. Come on, Fran. Oh, God. Oh, well, all right. Thanks. I. Right. God. Ooh, okay. Oh. Dodge. Dodge. Ooh, all right. Oh, please. Uh huh. We need Burn O Flame on here then. Thanks. And. Burn O Flame. Thank you. Not. It's good damage. It's not as ridiculous as I expected, though. Uh, okay. And... we get a stance break from this, or... Thanks. I... Oh, ooh, okay. Thanks. Eventually we're gonna get a phase transition. I think that's it. Okay. Well, okay. Come on. And... Oh, well, alright. Thank you for the lightning, bro. And so much me. Okay. Cool. Dodge, dodge. Oh, okay. Thanks. Do what? Okay. Huh. You know... What could I use without so much of a start time? Blood Boom. Honestly, Blood Boom. Let's go for that. As a spell and... Black Flame is kind of crap on... Oh, characters from... Actually, what I could do is put on another fire spell. Black Flame's still good. Not as good in this one, but it's still just a good tossing spell. Toss out. So this is all we'll need. Use one of those rune arcs. My boy, our shame. You summon Freya. Okay. Red main Freya. Summoning cooperate. Oh, you can hear it on the other side now that it's doing its thing. Okay. <clears throat> and blessing. Thank you. 
Golden Vow. Protection. Okay. Then it's Blood Boon all the way. And then. <clears throat> well, for now. Runes are over there. Oh, there's a side path. Oh, there. Can I. Oh, interesting. Can I. And. Dodge and spray. I should have sprayed that directly down. Get it right. Not up, but down. Oh, please. Come on. Get up. Down. Directly down. Thank you. Oh, come on. Dodge. Heal. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, alright. It. This thing is kind of crazy. Okay. What? Okay. Come on. Let's go. Anything slow is not going to do me much good here. And can it even, can this thing even bleed? This thing can bleed, okay. Come on. Thanks. Okay. So how, how is aggro being decided here? How did, how did it heal? Whatever. Okay. Come on, you. Thanks. And, uh, the like of, maybe Bulgo would actually be better. Just poised through a lot of things that way. I am probably best off using Black Flame anyway. As much as it hurts me to say. As much as it's not as good as it was in other Souls games. I mean, before DLC, that is. Yeah, it. This should be fine. Just full spell build. Thanks. Alright. Dodge. Or not. Okay. That won't do all that much then. Okay. Go ahead, draw my aggro for me. Protection of the Urgery and... I'm not sure that got her. Okay. Cool. Dodge. Thanks. Okay. Ooh, okay. Well, alright. Wish she's strong. Mm -hmm. But... Pearson could work. It's an interesting idea because among other things... Oh, you got the ice gone. The music has definitely got a bit of a Chinese feel to it. I like that. Given that... Lion dancing is a Chinese thing. Okay. Come on, come on. Ooh, okay. Can you go for a stance break? You don't go for crits. Okay, whatever. Alright. Oh, please. Wow. Okay. Uh, I'll just... Okay. Which are you going to use? I, luckily, the air is good enough to hit most of the time. Okay. Well, it's just a matter of just continuing. Now aggro's on me. Great. Okay, I... Dodge. Okay. Oh, it's in the tornado at me. Okay. It's pure physical damage. Come on, come on. I oh, well, alright. Luckily, aggro is getting split pretty well. Thank you, Freya, for being just a Oh, no, no, no! Oh, it's invincible because it's in its throw animation right up. Okay. Toss another and another. There we are, cool. Cool pickle. Thank you for being our trusty meat shield. Gotta love it. And... Oh, I've got its Divine Beast head. That's you, dog from the Grandum, too. Yep, and Frey's returned home. So... Divine Beast head, ritual headwear, and form the Divine Beast head, used to perform the Lion Dance, worn by the very finest of the Sculpted Keepers. Alas, it no longer responds to the old woman's earnest prayer. Sculpted Keeper. Divine Invocation hides intensity of the storm. Storm, spells, and weapon arts. Alongside strength and dexterity, but reduces the restorative, restorative effects of drinking from plastic to sacred tears, and focus is also troubled by wearing this headwear. So it makes you crazy. Remember, it's the dance going hewn in the shadow tree. The power of its namesake can be unlocked by the finger reader. Alternately, can be used to gain a great bounty of runes. When the Impaler's army assailed the tower, the ritual of the lion's dance was turned towards martial ends. Its divinity, its fury, its light footed beardy. Well, that was oh silly way to do that but 
Definitely a bit cheesy, but we won in the end. So... Oh, yeah! We don't have Guidance of Grace, we just have Crosses. That's right. Should probably put some more spells on, but we'll see. Also, the Grand Theater of the Divine Beast. Random is special dialogue now. Special if you wear that hat. Eventually, that's going to take me up to... Good old... Any Elim, but first I'd like to actually talk to Frey here. Before I forget. Then, of course, there's... Whatever is down this way. Okay. I wonder if Church of the Bud might be anywhere close. We'll see. Hello, Frey. Ah, well met. That was a fine battle indeed. Damn straight. It heartens me that another warrior stands among us. Among the beckoned. Damage short helm. I was stricken I by battle against Melania. Immobile, feverish, and in great pain. I was entirely resigned to death. I was left behind. And only mm. Nicola was good enough to seek me So out. how long has she been here then? So how long has Millennia been asleep? Nice. And yet he claimed the, the poison. poison. Kind of like Quallock's sister. Now, I consider this wound my comfort. Hmm. Let us both take kindly Nicola's guidance to heart. May we meet again on the battlefield. Brave warrior. An other man. And Hornscent then? Ah, uh, yeah, but he's over in the other spot. Not yet, at least. Time will come. Nice. Not gods. Even if we did manage to dig up the secrets of his past. I doubt our meddling could ever amount to much. Hmm. Let us both take kindly Nicola's guidance to heart. May we meet again on the battlefield. Hey, warrior. Let us both may we meet again on the battlefield. Brave warrior. All right. She has very Greek-looking sandals, too. That horn sand is... Where is horn sand right now? Eternally Dower Fell keeps his distance. We're right over there. Is he anything new to say? I heard you. As long as okay. He has not acknowledged the fact that we went into Pelurad and killed a lot of his friends. Probably a good thing for me. My question is. Doesn't say anything about the incant scaling, but presumably that power is getting boosted too. So, next thing is going to be. Cliff Road Terminus. And Talking to the Grand and checking out what's over here, and then... Of course, we got the River Ruins down there. Hmm. It... A lot's gotten done. My question is, I think this would take me to Jagged Peak, and I could do that before Rolana, which would be funny. But I guess that's gonna be it for today. Thank you for watching, and yeah, Santa Ragans, see ya.